around 13 or 14 Celsius. More wet weather to come as we go through the end of the day tomorrow. Whilst the outbreaks of rain do push their way towards the east, there are further outbreaks of rain pushing in from the west, again heaviest over any higher ground. More rain to come as we go through the rest of the week, particularly across northern and western parts, but it is going to turn milder, temperatures widely getting into mid-teens. Bye-bye. That warm feeling inside from Boxed Boilers, sponsors of weather on GB News. We've got cash, treats and a spring shopping spree to be won in a great British giveaway. You could win an amazing £12,345 in tax-free cash. Plus, there's a further £500 of shopping vouchers to spend at your favourite store. We'll also give you a gadget package to use in your garden this spring. That includes a games console, a pizza oven and a portable smart speaker so you can listen to GB News on the go. For another chance to win the vouchers, the treats and £12,345 in tax-free cash, Text GBWIN to 84902. Text cost £2 plus one standard network rate message. Or post your name and number to GB03 PO Box 8690 Derby DE19T. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5 pm on Friday, the 29th of March. Full terms and privacy notice at GBNews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if watching or listening on demand. Good luck. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com, keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Christopher Hope. And I'm Glory DiPiero, bringing you PMQ's live here on GB News. Every Wednesday, we'll bring you live coverage of Prime Minister's questions when Rishi Sunak and Sir Keir Starmer go head to head in the House of Commons. We'll be asking our viewers and listeners to submit the questions that they would like to put to the Prime Minister, and we'll put that to our panel of top politicians in our Westminster studio. That's PMQ's live here on GB News, Britain's election channel. Join me, Camilla Tominey, every Sunday at 9.30 when I'll be interviewing the key players in British politics and taking them to task. And this report basically says that he's not fit to stand trial. With an upcoming election looming over Westminster, now is the time for clear, honest answers. I agree. And that's precisely what I'll get. Is he indecisive? Incompetent? That's the Camilla Tominey Show at 9.30 every Sunday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's election channel. GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other. Which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the people's channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. A very good afternoon to you. It's 3 p.m. and a very happy Monday to you. Welcome to the Martin Dalton Show on GB News, broadcasting live from the heart of Westminster all across the UK. Today, our top story, Lee Anderson, former deputy chair of the Tory party and MP for Ashfield, the heart of the Red Wall, defects to Richard Tyser's Reform UK party. How significant could this be? All the latest on this throughout the show. Plus, who are the Reform Nine that might defect next? Next, and yet more asylum housing fury, this time in Dartford in Kent, where locals are rightly outraged at a building on a residential street being repurposed to house asylum seekers amid the UK housing crisis. And Princess Kate has issued an official apology over that manipulated photograph of her and her kids released on Mother's Day, saying she was simply experimenting with editing. Well, now she's facing calls to release the original. We'll have all the latest on this huge Ferrari, and that's all coming up in your next hour. Welcome to the show on the start of a week that could be 
absolutely monumental in British politics. Been talk a long, long time, scurrilous rumours of defections from the Conservative Party to reform, and now that day is upon us. First up the ladder, Lee Anderson, MP for Ashfield. Will others follow? Rumours of nine others. Who are the Reform Nine? I'll have all of the inside gossip, but I want you to get in touch. Email me, gbviews at gbnews.com. What does it say to you about the, your voting intentions? Will you vote for reform now, Lee? has crossed over. Has Lee betrayed the Conservative Party? Will it split the vote? Does any of that matter? This is your show. Please ping those views across. I'll read out the best so long as you keep them clean. But first, it's time for your latest news headlines with Sam Francis. Martin, thanks very much. Good afternoon from the newsroom. It's just gone three o'clock, the top story of the day. Lee Anderson says that beating the Conservatives at the next general election is not at the top of his agenda. He became Reform UK's first MP this morning after he was suspended by the Conservatives for claiming that Islamists had, he said, got control of the London mayor. Polls suggest that around 13% of voters support reform. But as recently as January, Mr Anderson had said it was not a proper political party. Now, though, Reform's newest member says the party will allow him to speak out on behalf of millions. Parliament doesn't seem to understand what many British people want. And quite frankly, some of them need to get out more. I made some remarks a few weeks back about the London Mayor, for which I was stripped of the whip in the, from the Conservative Party. And let me be clear right now, on this stage, I will not apologise. It is no secret that I've been talking to my friends in Reform for a while, and Reform UK has offered me the chance to speak out in Parliament on behalf of millions of people up and down the country who feel that they're not being listened to. Well, Labour's uh, Jonathan Ashworth says that it's another blow for the Prime Minister. What I think this reveals is the sheer chaos in the Conservative Party, a government divided from top to bottom, and Rishi Sunak too weak to exert any authority and a divided government cannot govern in the interests of the country. I think people have had enough of this and after 14 years of failure this proves once again that it is time for change. People in Mr Anderson's constituency of Ashfield have been speaking to GB News giving their thoughts about him joining Reform UK. He's probably doing it to save his own bacon to be honest because the people around here would probably vote for reform. So that's probably all he is doing it. He speaks truth, and that's uh, A lot of people don't like that, so... Well, I think it's very nice. And uh, I don't have any um, issues about him at all. Well, I mean, it's not my prerogative what Lee Anderson does, but I think that it would suit his views more than the Conservative Party, and he's tried the Labour Party already, so... Yeah, I think, um, I think it's for him. Maybe not for Ashfield, but... Yeah, I think, it's, uh, I think that's his lane. Now, you may have seen a photo of the Princess of Wales and her family released on Mother's Day. Well, she has now publicly apologised for altering that photo released by Kensington Palace. Posting to social media earlier, she admitted that, like many amateur photographers, she does occasionally experiment with editing, adding that she was sorry for any confusion it may have caused. The image taken by the Prince of Wales was withdrawn by various global photo agencies after suspicions that a number of edits may have been made to it. Nottinghamshire Police has been told by a watchdog today that it must urgently produce an improvement plan after it was put into special measures. The families of Barnaby Webber and Grace O'Malley Kumar have welcomed that news. The two teenagers and school caretaker Ian Coates died during a spate of knife attacks in Nottingham. The force has now been asked to improve how it manages and carries out effective investigations and to put measures in place that ensure victims get the support that they need. Britain has secured a global agreement with politicians, tech companies and ministers from across the G7 today to combat international fraud. Signatories at the event in London, the first international gathering of its kind, pledged to strengthen the intelligence and support of victims of fraud. They say it will ensure that there are no safe havens for financial fraudsters. The energy regulator Ofgem is looking at ways to protect consumers from spiralling costs amid a record number of unpaid bills. 
Around £3.1 billion of debts are piling up as concerns grow over the high cost of household bills. It's after the price of energy in the average British home hit more than £3,500 a year last October. Passengers on board a flight from Australia to New Zealand endured a terrifying mid-air moment when their plane unexpectedly dropped. 50 people were injured while on board that aeroplane, with witnesses describing chaos inside the cabin, saying some were thrown to the ceiling with enough force to break the roof panels. Twelve passengers were taken to hospital when the flight finally landed in Auckland, with one, we understand, in a serious condition. The Boeing 787's sudden loss of altitude is still being investigated. Latam Airlines say that technical events caused the sudden movement during that flight. And Malaysia has been offered £100 million to assist in hosting the Commonwealth Games. The next Games are due to take place in two years' time, but they're currently without a host after Melbourne pulled out. The significant financial investment would see the event return to Kuala Lumpur after nearly 30 years. The Olympic Council of Malaysia says that a formal invitation has been received, but the Commonwealth Games Federation have so far declined to comment. Those are the headlines, more in the next half hour. But in the meantime, you can sign up to GB News Alerts. Just scan the QR code there on your screen. Or if you're listening on radio, you can go to gbnews.com slash alerts. Thank you, Sam. Right, let's get cracking. And of course, there is only one place to start, and that is a spectacular defection of Red Wall MP Lee Anderson, who has joined Richard Tice's Reform Party this morning, announcing the move at a press conference earlier today, 10:30 a.m. Anderson, of course, who was recently suspended by the Conservative Party for his criticised remarks about London Mayor Sadiq Khan. In fact, they were uttered on this very show two and a bit Fridays ago. Sadiq Khan, of course, he accused the Tories of stifling. Free speech and said he found it unpalatable that he'd been disciplined for speaking his mind and he also went on to claim that other Tory MPs share his views but will not stick their heads above the parapet just yet. Well, joining me to discuss this in the studio is GB News' political editor, Chris Hope. Chris, you were there. You were taking the temperature. In fact, you were asking the first question of Lee Anderson. The big question is, is this a Red Wall revolution, the beginnings of something spectacular, a seismic moment, or is it a fault storm? We don't know yet, and we'll wait and see in High Martin. Yeah, my first question was, I think, on your programme, maybe in January, mm. the 2nd January, yep. he said reform is not, not the answer, you vote reform, you let in the Labour Party. I said, well, the answer, you told Martin Daubney that mm. on, on GB News, what's changed since then in 10 weeks? And he said the George Galloway by-election mm. win had changed. Really? Well, OK, we'll take your, uh, your word for it. So other MPs might be looking at Galloway's victory and wondering what on earth should, should, would they do the same thing. Don't, let's not forget, of course, he was an independent MP. Mm. He made those remarks on, on, on again with you, Martin, yours at the centre of all the news all the time. <laughs> with you, he told you on your, on your, mm. your, in, your interview show, he said that um, he claimed that um, Sadiq Khan and, and uh, Keir Starmer had been overtaken by extremists during, the, during those, yep. those marches you'd been out to see, um, the Palace Pro Palestinian marches, uh, uh, and, and concern about that, and that's why he lost the whip. So he was independent, and they demanded a, uh, an apology. That's um, James Cleverly, the, the uh, Home Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor. He wouldn't give it, and that's where he got the decision, and off he goes. So a, a, it's a huge moment, I think. Will others join him? I've been told that as many as 40 MPs were on an original list of defectors. Mm. That list is down to nine. So there are nine Tory MPs right now in active talks about joining the Reform UK party. Nine is a big number. It's nearly as big as the Liberal Democrats, the fourth biggest party in Parliament. We're not there yet. It may be that only two or three go or zero go, but I'm told there are nine in talks right now. OK, so purely in a speculative sense, <laughs> who are the Reform Nine? Um, Lee knocks about with a lot. He was the natural leader of the Red Wall. He was the chair of the Blue Collar Conservatives before he was the deputy chair. Um, he's sick of seeing people like Brendan Clark Smith, yep. Bassett Lord is over the border, de facto leader of that entire area. And some bigger names have been mooted about too. 
Is this a movement with momentum, or for now, do you think he's on his own? I think we'll wait and see. Now, Nigel Farage, of course, presenter on GB News, also the honorary, honorary president of Reform UK, he said, didn't he, that the Westminster, us lot, haven't quite woken up to how big it is out there, mm. you know, out of the side of the Westminster bubble. So we'll wait and see how it polls. Lee Anderson, of course, has got a majority of 5,733 um, in Ashfield. Um, whether he can hang on to that, that will be definitely in range for Labour Party at the next election. So now whether the big resource might go into reform, we might see even Nigel Farage, let's say, come the election, campaigning for, for Lianson there. Lianson, for, for his part, he says, country first, constituency second, um, uh, party third. That's the order he views life in, and that's why he feels he's not letting down uh, Tory voters. And he said, I want my country back, talking about what he believes is how our country is changing in front of our eyes. Very emotive stuff. And what was yeah. really interesting was that he said that his mum and dad yeah. would only vote for him if he was a Reform Party candidate. It's an astonishing thing to Several say. Several times he said that. He's, he's 59, his parents are still alive, they said that to him yesterday. And, of course, the, that's because I think the, the problem... That Maybe what Farage is getting to, and again, I haven't talked to him, so I don't know, but maybe the point of this is that you've got this disaffection growing in the Red Wall with this Tory party. Mm. Certainly, Lee Anderson, when he was a Tory MP, was viewed with an ob as, a, as an object of fascination mm. amongst Southern Tories. They would say, crumbs, why, who are these new Northern cousins yeah. who signed up to our party in 2019? And he was asked to speak to party contingency dinners uh, on Friday nights. He, he toured the country, talking to them, saying, here I am, I'm a Tory like you are. Well, he's not now. He's joined mm. Reform UK, what will that mean for the base? Many, many of the base are to the right of Rishi Sunak. We saw that in the in the leadership election in 2022. What's fascinating today as well was he was very combative with the media. Yes. Um, a rival um, channel put a question across and he basically didn't answer the question. They said, but you didn't answer my question. That actually went down really, really well on social media. I wonder if now he's off the leash, as it were, with CCHQ, he can be really unfiltered. He can be really almost like drain the swamp Trumpian in his dealings with the press. Turn it back on the press. And I think that will land well. Of course, with GB News, he's a paid presenter of GB News, but we asked him, I asked him, I thought it was a really a difficult question, what, you know, how can you, the voters of um, Ashfield trust you now you've turned tail on the Tory party, mm. having been a Labour councillor until 2019. So we'll, we'll still give him a hard time on our channel. But yeah, I think he, he was putting it back at them, wasn't he? And mm. I think you were cheering them on, were you, on, on social media? I was, yeah, because I, I just think, you know, we saw in America, people are not only fed up with the political establishment, they're fed up with the media establishment that supports it. Chris Hope, thanks for your input. And, of course, we'll go this throughout the show. Now, let's get the view of Andrew Southall, Southall, a Reform UK parliamentary candidate. Welcome to the show, Andrew. So the big question is, will he be welcomed into the fold or will he put a few noses out of joint? Let's face it, now he's going to be the big dog. This is seismic. We're well pleased to have Lee on board. He has a wealth of experience in politics, and he says it how, it how it is. The woke establishment don't like it, and our reform supporters will surely be delighted. And do you think that um, the party really needed some kind of working class oomph? A lot of people saying Richard Tice, a very, very competent leader, Ben Habib, very popular, and with the she's on the show later, very popular, naturally conservative, but the party really was ne needing that working class brick in the wall. Lee Anderson, do you think he's the man that's going to pull together the red wall for you guys? I agree entirely. Um, the idea of having working class candidates will turn the red wall turquoise, not blue. And um, yet many of our candidates are working class. We're, we are the people's party of this country. We're going to give this country back to its citizens. We're going to stand up to the woke establishment. And people like Lee, as I say, say it how it is. And that's what the silent majority want to hear. OK. And Andrew, it's Chris Hope in the studio here with Martin. Um, is your problem now at reform? You don't know where voters live. You're basically a social media campaign with a couple of high-profile politicians leading it. Um, many people haven't heard of us. We're polling quite high, irrespective of that. Um, I'm campaigning hard in Dudley. We're getting the word out there. And when people hear about our policies, they really like the sound of us. So we're going to keep on making jumps in the polls. And uh, my message to anybody thinking of voting Tory, don't split the reform vote by voting Tory. <laughs>
And Andrew, what if one of the parliamentary candidates that were thinking about crossing over and following in Lee's footsteps, one of the Reform Nine, what if they happen to be in your constituency or another constituency? Would Reform Party candidates happily <laughs> stand down or would that stick in your craw, Chief? <laughs> I don't see um, the MP I'm standing against doing that because he's been distributing leaflets saying don't vote for reform, even just recently. So I'd like to say, Marco, thanks for doing my work for me in getting <laughs> the message about reform out there. Um, but if anybody local wants to come across, they will have to stand in the seats where we don't yet have a candidate and there's not many of those available. Now, Andrew, has money been offered, do you think, to the Anderson to come over? I would not like to speculate on that. Um, I don't know, and I would want to guess. OK, do you think it's going to give you that much needed boost to the coffers? I mean, we saw with the Brexit party a revolution of £25 a pop, single people putting their money in, for, forming a huge crowd. So do you think Lee's got the motivation to reignite that funding model? I always felt that as soon as we hit 15% in the national polls, you'd start to see big donors come across, like we've had in the past where uh, UKIP and Brexit Party have had big donors. As soon as we hit 15%, you're going to start seeing a little bit more money coming in. Uh, but the support for Lee Anderson, people like him as a, a person, uh, we're going to see supporters uh, coming out to vote for him, and we're going to see people come across to donate to his and our campaigns as well. OK, what's well, an exciting momentum moving forward. That's probably not the right word to use, momentum, <laughs> but exciting, um, critical mass for you, Andrew Southall, Reform UK's parliamentary candidate for Dudley North. Thank you very much for joining us on this seismic day. Well, why don't we hear now from Shadow Paymaster General Jonathan Ashworth, who gave, who gave his thoughts on Lee Anderson's defection to Reform UK a little earlier on today. I think it reveals the utter chaos engulfing the Tory party how the Tory government is utterly divided from top to bottom, and Rishi Sunak is frankly too weak, weak to exert any authority. And a divided government simply cannot govern in the interest of the country, cannot make the changes that people who are paying more in tax and want to see the NHS fixed want to see. And I think what today will reinforce is that after 14 years of failure now, it's time for change. And that's Jonathan Ashworth on a divided party. Well, he might know a little bit about that himself. And anyway, we can now hear from the residents of Ashfield who have given their thoughts on Lee Anderson's defection. He's probably doing it to save his own bacon, to be honest, because the people around here would probably vote for reform. So that's probably all he is doing it. But while it looks like he wants to speak truth, I know several people have asked him awkward questions in meetings and then banned from the meetings all of a sudden. So it's pretty much the same as the others. Do you think there should now be a by-election in Ashfield because they didn't vote for him as a reform candidate, they did as a Conservative? Hmm. That's an awkward one, isn't it? Depends which... If I actually gave a monkeys, I'd probably say there should be a by-election. Seeing as I don't give a monkeys, I don't care. Well, he's the only MP that speaks his mind that's through. I mean... You can't vote for Conservative anymore, and you can't vote for Labour, so it's the right. You'll be voting for Lee Anderson? Oh, definitely. No, it's from books. He's the best MP in, that's in the Parliament at the moment. Well, I mean, it's not my prerogative what Lee Anderson does, but I think that it would suit his views more than the Conservative Party, and he's tried the Labour Party already, so... Yeah, I think um, I think it's for him. Maybe not for Ashfield, but yeah, I think it's uh, I think that's his lane. I don't think I'd vote for him in whatever party he's in. I don't really like his views, um, but but yeah, I can see why people would now. He's in the Reform Party. Yeah, I think it's time for change. Yeah, yeah, I do, I do. Um, I think that Ashfield's uh, underfunded as it is, and hopefully any any chance to stop that would be great. Yeah. And and how would that be stopped? With what kind of a party here in Ashfield? Uh, I think a Labour Party would help, um, for the obvious reasons, really, yeah. Yeah, working class sort of uh, area and uh, massively underfunded as we are, so. There we go, the fine people of Ashfield have spoken. A seat I campaigned, and in fact, I stood against Lee Anderson in 2019, and that is going to be one seat to keep your eyes on. Now, it's time now for the latest Great British giveaway and your chance to win £12,345, one, two, three, four, five, in cash and a whole host of seasonal treats. And here's how you could bag all of that.
We're springing into spring and giving you the chance to win the seasonal essentials. First, there's an incredible £12,345 in tax-free cash to be won, plus a spring shopping spree with £500 in shopping vouchers to spend in the store of your choice. And finally, a garden gadget package to enjoy, including a handheld games console, a portable smart speaker and a pizza oven. For your chance to win the vouchers, the treats and £12,300 £45 in tax free cash. Text GB Win to 84902. Text cost £2 plus one standard network rate message. Or post your name and number to GB03 PO Box 8690 Derby DE1 9 double T. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5 pm on Friday, the 29th of March. Full terms and privacy notice at gbnews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if watching or listening on demand. Good luck. Great stuff. Now you're watching all of to GB News. Plenty more to come, including I'll bring you throughout the show, including all the latest reaction to our top story. And that is, of course, Lee Anderson defects from the Conservatives. Just who could follow him? Who are the Reform Nine? I'm Martin Daubney on GB News, Britain's News Channel. Headliners. Tomorrow's papers tonight, every night from 11 p.m. Welcome back to Headliners. And Paul, we're going to get straight into Monday's mail for some good old fashioned traditional mail breastfeeding. Yeah. Uh, to answer the question, what is the latest woke hell, Josh? Uh, Row as hospitals say hormone filled milk from trans <laughs> women who were born male is just as good for a baby as the real thing. It's possible for men, if they pump themselves full of oestrogen, to grow larger breast tissue. And they often do... If or you just eat lots of burgers. Uh, yeah, or... Yeah. <laughs> Easy bit, eh? Um, but... And once you've done that, it is, it is actually then possible to express or lactate some... A liquid. A liquid, OK? If to that liquid you then add another load of pills, medication, chemicals, whatever, that lactation juice can be fed to a baby. We don't really... This is not for the sake of the baby. The baby has no benefits from this whatsoever. The studies are very weak on it. Um, it's a bit worrying because, you know, when ho hospitals started indulging in, in homeopathy and having, a, you know, the NHS had homeo homeopathic um, hospitals, that was worrying because they're supposed to be a trusted authority. And before saying something like this, there should be an awful lot of study done. I don't want to shame this hospital. This is... Whether it's necessary. This, yeah, let's do. Hospital Sussex NHS Foundation Trust. That's who it is. And they have written one of the stupidest sentences I have read God, aloud read in the two years that I've been <laughs> privileged to do this show. It says, the term human milk is meant to be neutral and not gender biased. <laughs> yep. Wow. Yep. That's incredible. <laughs> yep. Oh, my God, we're laughing at you. I mean, and as someone says here, babies are not props. And that's the yeah. scary thing. And no. when it's not when we're not focusing primarily on the health of a baby. No, but the uh, the, the, the feeling of a person doing it yeah. rather than it's, it's a bit of an odd way to go, isn't it? So. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at seven o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panelists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from seven on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Your weekend starts here with Friday Night Live with me, Mark Dolan, eight till nine on GB News. Big stories, big guests and big laughs as we get you ready for a cracking weekend. That's Friday Night Live with Mark Dolan. Fridays 8 till 9 on GB News. Bring your own drinks. The admission's free. From 10am every Saturday, we want to make you think and we want to make you laugh. So we will give you all the top stories. Now we start with a story that has shocked the nation this week. But we're also going to make it light and fun and bring some entertainment in to make your Saturday morning nice and restful. Only on GB News, Britain's news channel. Welcome back. 3.25 is the time. You're watching or listening to Martin Daubney on GB News. Now, a total of 58 survivors of terror attacks inspired by Islamist extremism have signed an open letter calling for an end to anti-Muslim hate. And they also criticise some politicians for effectively equating being Muslim with being an extremist, which they argue makes the job of Islamist extremists easier and plays into the hands 
of terrorists. Well, joining me now is a signatory of that letter and survivor of the terrorist attack on Fishmongers Hall, Darren Frost. Darren, welcome to the show. Of course, people rem will remember your extraordinary acts of bravery, which may make you blush, Darren, but it absolutely was. And you were known as the Narwhal Tusk hero, an incredible moment. Um, in November 2019, where you stepped in and basically totally risked your own life. Can we reflect upon that day, which you say is a day which has forever changed you? Hi, Martin. Thank you very much. Um, yes, yeah, so that day in question, we were brought together through a programme with Learning Together from Cambridge University, the Ministry of Justice, kindly hosted at the Fishmonger Hall, Fishmongers Hall in London, on London Bridge. And uh, sadly, one of those individuals was an extremist. Uh, he pretended really well not to be and to have been converted or come back to public. And uh, unfortunately, he pre-planned an attack where he uh, stabbed many people, uh, ended up killing two of those people. Um, and he had a really convincing suicide uh, belt across him and two eight inch knives that he had duct taped to his hands and um, myself using the narwhal tusk and some former prisoners or prison leavers and uh, Lucas who is was a porter at Fishmongers Hall tackled him I kept holding him down until the police arrived uh, the police arrived with, with their machine guns or automatic rifles at our heads and told us to clear away um, I refused to let him go because I thought if I did he would set off this bomb and blow up the police, the public and everyone around us. Astonishing act of bravery for which you've received the final civilian gallantry award that was approved, of course, by the late Queen. And, and you know, hats off to you. you know, the very, very best of humanity for selflessly stepping in and doing what you did and no doubt, obviously, saving further loss of life. Can we talk now a little bit about the letter you've signed, um, Survivors Against Terror, 58 survivors of 15 Islamist terror attacks. Darren, what motivated you to sign that letter? Yeah, thank you very much for debating this letter and bringing it up today. Um, the, the letter is really an important one. And when I heard that others were debating writing this, um, I thought I had to read it first. And uh, I really, it resonated with me because there's a clear distinction to be made between a, uh, a Muslim individual and an extremist. It's the same as any extremist and the, the faith or their, their cause that they propose to, to be following, they're extreme of those views and they don't align with those views. And I think it's really dangerous when, um, sadly, we've had some leaders recently uh, confusing the two terminologies and uh, alluding to or to insinuating that uh, Muslims are terrorists. And this is really dangerous territory. So we need to put a stop to it and we need to stand up to that kind of language. Do you think it also would be very useful? I often have Muslim leaders on the show here and for yeah. the Muslim community themselves to call out those extremists and to make this absolutely clear this is a tiny, tiny minority of people nevertheless must be isolated and tackled. Well, it's not just the Muslim community, it's the whole community that should stamp out extremists. Uh, the same as um, if we think back to New Zealand, they did a, a fantastic thing after those attacks, and they said that an extremist is an outsider to all of society, not just the viewpoint that they propose to be supporting. So I think it's for all of us to stamp out extremism um, in whatever form that, that comes. Uh, it's for all of us to, if we see it, stamp out and report uh, hate where we see it cropping up. Um, but yes, I do agree that uh, I I'm glad that Muslim leaders are wanting to stamp that out. And that shows a reflection of the true Muslim faith. Uh, to be Muslim is a, a, a religious faith that is about peace and harmony. Um, and you do get individuals who unfortunately misinterpret that. And um, and, and, and it, it has severe consequences. I, as you As you heard, I faced up to the worst of that. But what I think is really important is that if you listen to survivors of attacks from Islamist extremists, we aren't wanting vengeance. We aren't wanting an eye for an eye. What we're wanting is no more attack and we're wanting the public to be safe. Um, and, and to do that comes through understanding and our British values of uh, tolerance and respect of other beliefs and religions.
And Darren, an extraordinary moment that came out of that initial incident in November 2019 that was when you were holding Usman Khan down and stopping him, as you felt at the time, preventing him from setting off a suicide device. You said you didn't want the police to kill him. You wanted him to face justice. Do you still believe that? Um, I think it's a much neater solution that he got killed. I think it's much better for the victim's families uh, so that they don't have to suffer going through trials and having that drawn out. Uh, but I do believe he wanted to die. And I think that was his choice, whereas he took the choice from others. And I wish he didn't get his choice. I wish he faced our justice system and, uh, and our prison system because he was wanting the coward's way out. He wanted to become a martyr. But I'm very proud of our media for facing uh, or highlighting the heroics of other individuals, the public, um, the, the, the armed responses, the first responders, for, uh, for how they reacted. Because I think that's where the focus should be, is how strong our communities are. In fact, even our group of survivors who've written this letter, that they're all strong enough to come out and put their stories on the line for causes that, that are important. It shows that these terror attacks actually can bring us closer together, which is the opposite of what the terrorists want. Darren Frost, you're an extraordinarily brave young man. Thank you for what you did, and I wish you the very best of luck. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having me on, Martin. Bye-bye. Well. Well, there's lots more still to come between now and four o'clock, including yet another case of housing being prioritised for asylum seekers. When, with, when will local people be prioritised for their local services? We'll have all the latest on this in just a moment from Dartford. But first, it's time for your latest news headlines with Tatiana Sanchez. Martin, thank you. The top stories from the GB newsroom. Lee Anderson says he would still have defected to the Reform UK party even if he hadn't been suspended from the Conservatives. He became the party's first MP this morning after he lost the Tory whip for claiming that Islamists had got control of the London mayor. Polls suggest that around 13% of voters support reform. And as recently as January, Mr Anderson said it was not a proper political party. He now says reform will allow him to speak out on behalf of millions. The families of Barnaby Webber and Grace O'Malley Coomer have welcomed the news that Nottinghamshire police has been put in special measures. The two teenagers and school caretaker Ian Coates died during a spate of knife attacks in Nottingham. The force has been told by a watchdog that it must urgently produce an improvement plan amid concerns over how it carries out investigations. The energy regulator Ofgem is looking at ways to protect customers from spiralling costs amid a record number of unpaid bills. Around £3.1 billion of debts are piling up as concerns grow over the high cost of household bills. It's after the price of energy in an average British home hit more than £3,500 a year last October. And the Queen has joined the Prince of Wales at Westminster Abbey for today's Commonwealth Day service. They're among the senior royals who are gathering for this year's event, which draws on the theme of resilience against a backdrop of health worries in the family. Though he'll miss the cert today's service, His Majesty echoed his late mother in a video message, reaffirming his commitment to serve the 56 member countries to the best of his ability. For the latest stories, you can sign up to GB News Alerts by scanning the QR code on your screen or you can go to gbnews.com slash alerts. For stunning gold and silver coins you'll always value, Rosalind Gold proudly sponsors the GB News Financial Report. Here's a quick snapshot of today's markets. The pound will buy you $1.2812 and €1.1732. The price of gold is £1,703.47 per ounce and the FTSE 100 at 7,639 points. Rosalind Gold proudly sponsors the GB News Financial Report.
Thank you, Tatiana. Now you're watching or listening to GB News. Plenty more to bring you throughout the show, including all the very latest on the huge news of the day. And that man, Lee Anderson, has defected to Reform UK. Could this trigger many more defections? I'm Martin Daubney on GB News, Britain's news channel. Nana Queer, weekends from 3 p.m. Should we put tobacco-style warnings on ultra-processed foods? Boris Johnson is calling on the government to do this. In this Daily Mail column, the former prime minister says that people don't know what they're feeding their families and there's too many extra ingredients. That's why I'm asking, should we put tobacco-style warnings on ultra-processed food? Well, joining me now to discuss, Steve Miller, former presenter of Fat Families, Helena Davidson, campaigner and policy expert at the Vegan Society. Right, so I'm going to start with you. Steve Miller, what do you think? Oh, I'm applauding Boris today. Good on you, mate. Uh, and the reason for that is we know that the research on uh, cigarette, you know, the warnings on cigarettes, I should say, when those warnings were visual, they worked very well. The second reason on a practical level is that we need to start stop looking and listening before we start, you know, grazing and putting mm. things in the trolley. And the third thing is that you know, these kind of signs or these warnings, I should say, are kind of hypnotic. They trigger the emotion. So they're much more likely to get people to think and, and maybe resist. Yeah, so the, at the Vegan Society, we're broadly in favour of increasing consumer knowledge um, when it comes to the nutrition, nutritional value of people's food. Um, but I think it's important to mention that ultra processed food isn't an issue that's exclusive to vegans. And whilst most meat alternatives will fall into the ultra-processed food category, it largely depends on how we're going to look at how UPFs are going to be assessed because vegan um, alternatives that are fall under ultra-processed foods, they're actually on average healthier than meat products or ultra-processed foods that contain animal products. Really? So I think it depends on how we look at it. We might have to take a closer look at the nutritional profile of individual foods rather than the level of processing. Join us every night on GB News at 11pm for Headliners, which is three top comedians going through the next day's news stories, which is exactly what you need, because when the establishment has gone crazy, you need some craziness to make sense of it. So join us 11pm every night on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. From 10am every Saturday, we want to make you think and we want to make you laugh. So we will give you all the top stories. Now we start with a story that has shocked the nation this week. But we're also going to make it light and fun and bring some entertainment in to make your Saturday morning nice and restful. Only on GB News, Britain's news channel. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11am on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Welcome back. 3.38 is your time. You're watching or listening to Martin Daubney on GB News. Princess Kate's Photoshop faux pas. Yeah, the Princess of Wales has apologised for the confusion over a Mother's Day photograph released by Kensington Palace yesterday. In a statement released on social media, Kate said, like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. Well, after picture agencies pulled the picture over manipulation concerns, people are calling for the unedited photo, the original, to be released. But Kensington Palace have insisted that they will not be reissuing the original picture. Well, joining me now is um, Cameron Walker. He's outside Westminster Abbey, GB News' royal correspondent. Cameron, welcome to the show. Never has a photograph caused such a huge furore. Is still talking about it, Cameron. Oh, I know, it's a huge PR problem for Kensington Palace, Martin. This is the photo that was meant to reassure us, wasn't it? But the princess is fine and well and recovering as expected. Instead, it's just added fuel to the fire because now more questions have been raised as to why was it so heavily 
edited. Now, a royal source describes the princess's uh, edits as as minor uh, as minor edits. Um, however, it's clearly more than just a bit of airbrushing and a bit of contrasting. There are specific points to that image which have been changed. Now, clearly, it looks like on the surface that the Princess of Wales is a perfectly innocent mistake, as she says herself in her statement. She is an amateur photographer and therefore an amateur picture editor as well. But Kensington Palace would have known that this was, had been heavily scrutinised, this image, because, as I said, it was meant to reassure us and quash these social media rumours, and it's done the opposite. So um, it appears that nobody from Kensington Palace thoroughly checked that image. And as I said, it's just fueled these rumours, and it brings into question a wider point as to if William and Catherine really uh, insist on taking their own photographs and, and having overall control of the images of their children they release to the to the public, it has now, it runs into all sorts of issues because there wasn't an independent news photographer there. It cu it brings into question the trust uh, of what we see coming out of that palace. Uh, I spoke to the CEO of Republic earlier and this is what he said about Kate's apology. It, it doesn't really explain anything. We could see it's been edited. Um, the question is why? Uh, and why haven't they shown us the original photo? Um, because it's it's not just edited in a way that you know, she's trying to tidy it up. It looks uh, photoshopped in a way that, you know, were those people all in the photo when it was taken? Um, that's what it looks like. I'm not saying they weren't or were, but it just, it's very odd, and I don't think people are going to be convinced. Well, meanwhile, Her Majesty the Queen and the Prince of Wales are inside Westminster Abbey behind me. The Commonwealth Day service celebrating 75 years of the Commonwealth is concluding. And any moment now, we should see the Queen and the Prince of Wales emerge from the building behind me. When they arrived, it was incredibly noisy here. Three separate protest groups. The most prominent was the anti-monarchy campaign group Republic, who we just heard from. They had signs and were chanting uh, down with the crown. His Majesty the King, of course, uh, has been receiving cancer treatment. He was not inside the Abbey, however, he did release a video message saying uh, that he will continue to serve the Commonwealth as its head to the best of his ability. He also spoke of the, that the Commonwealth is a precious source of continued strength, inspiration and pride for the 56 Commonwealth uh, nations around the world who are part of it. Yeah, indeed, Cameron, I had to wade my way through yet more protesters in the way, on the way to the studio earlier, the anti, the Republican jobs. Uh, but the big question is, does the Commonwealth still have a future? We're seeing um, countries such as Jamaica wanting to have referendums to leave. But nevertheless, when I also came in, there were many, many proud people from all around Commonwealth countries in their full regalia out there. Yeah, well, the vast majority of Commonwealth nations are republics. It's only 15 nations where King Charles reigns as uh, head of state. As you mentioned, of course, Jamaica uh, is perhaps toying with the idea of becoming a republic. But Barbados, for example, recently got rid of the British monarch as head of state back in 2021. They are still part of that Commonwealth family of nations. And King Charles was really keen to put a, a, a climate message out there, as you can probably imagine, during his speech, because there are a number of low lying uh, Commonwealth nations which could really be affected by sea levels rising. Also, a number of young people in the Abbey today. At 60% of the uh, Commonwealth population of 2.6 billion people under the age of 30. So it was all about encouraging the next generation um, that unity that the Commonwealth brings. Superb stuff. Thank you much, very much, Cameron Walker, live there outside Westminster Palace. Great stuff. Now, plenty more to bring you on Lee Anderson's defection in just a moment. But first, in a GB News series, Innovation Britain, we are looking at the success of British manufacturing around the country. There's high value manufacturing happening all around the world, but for those factories to make good components, they need to be supported by good engineering, production engineering products. Um, Mick, that's what you guys make here in Brown and Holmes in Tamworth. Yep, that's where all of our manufacture comes from, the skills that we have here, yes. Absolutely, and those products that you make, they go all around the world. What are those products doing? 
those products are enabling other places, other countries to produce high quality parts. Yeah. Without these solutions, it's a struggle for them to produce these parts. Exactly. And what exactly kind of parts they're doing? There's an example here. This example, this is an aircraft component for aircraft engine, yeah. Yeah, so they're being made all the way over in Singapore, this component, to go into a jet engine. Um, and how come the products that they need to use to hold the blades to make them, um, why do they have to get made here in the UK? Yeah, they need the, um, the massive amount of experience for the design and the manufacture of, of these solutions to be able to produce their parts. Absolutely. And, and here at Brown Homes in Tamworth, what exactly do the, are the skills that you need to be able to produce the parts like this that get sent everywhere? Yeah, we've got guys working on computers in the office doing the designs and then manufacturing, machining these parts on the same site. So join manufacture, any problems? We've got the guys here that design the parts. And why is it important to be able to do all of that here in the UK in one site? It's because it's a, it's a bespoke solution that needs a lot of, lot of knowledge to manufacture that specific solution, yeah. Brilliant. And how important is the experience in making these kinds of uh, these fixtured engineering components for these products? Yeah, the experience goes a long way into the product that we produce. I mean, we've been doing this for over 75 years. 75 years of experience in engineering products supporting high value manufacturing all around the world like this one go to Singapore. Hello again, here's your latest GB News weather update brought to you by the Met Office. Some places towards the east may see a touch of frost, even a few patches of fog tonight, but for many it is going to turn wet and windy due to an area of low pressure and an associated weather system feeding in from the west. We already have an occluded front across parts of Northern Ireland that has brought some rain earlier today and that is going to bring more rain to northwest Scotland as we go through this evening and overnight, but it's across Northern Ireland where we're going to see some heavier rain and strong winds pushing in overnight and that rain then later reaching parts of western England, Wales and Scotland as we go through the early hours of tomorrow. Further east and there may be some clear spells in the cloud and so we could see a touch of frost, perhaps even a few patches of fog around first thing. Otherwise as we go through Tuesday a wet start and a windy start across western parts. The heaviest rain will be over higher ground, particularly over the hills and mountains of North Wales. The rain does ease a little bit as it pushes its way eastwards but most places will see some wet and windy weather for a time. We're going to see some milder air pushing its way in, so temperatures lifting a little bit higher than today, highs of around 13 or 14 Celsius. More wet weather to come as we go through the end of the day tomorrow. Whilst the outbreaks of rain do push their way towards the east, there are further outbreaks of rain pushing in from the west, again heaviest over any higher ground. More rain to come as we go through the rest of the week, particularly across northern and western parts, but it is going to turn milder, temperatures widely getting into mid-teens. Bye-bye. Tired of the usual focus tested pre-prepared Westminster runaround? Well, so am I. So you want higher taxes? Is your department to blame for this? Are you rethinking this policy? Every Sunday at 9.30, I'll be sitting down with those in power to get the truth about the issues affecting you. Let's be honest, we've known about the cost pressures of this project for years, not months. That's the Camilla Tomini Show, a politics show with personality. On GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. 2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise? And who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel. Earlier on Breakfast. 
what was deemed to be a fairly innocuous photograph of the Princess of Wales and her children, which was put out for Mother's Day, but it has erupted into a scandal. Four international picture agencies have killed this image. Yeah. That's really rare. I can't think of a, a time since I've been doing this job for the best part of 15 years where a royal image has been recalled. They knew this image would be so scrutinised because it's the first official one we've seen since her abdominal surgery and all the conspiracy theorists. You know, it's just adding fuel to this fire. We're making sure that the British people are kept safe from uh, the various forms of uh, extremism that we sadly see in our country. Every morning, it's breakfast from 6 a.m. Hope you can join us. Welcome back. It's 3.50. You're watching or listening to Martin Daubney on GB News. Now, in the next hour, we'll be speaking with former Conservative Minister and now Reform UK member... Anne Whittacombe for her thoughts on Lee Anderson's dramatic defection earlier today. Locals in Dartford have expressed their horror after a decision has been made to repurpose a building on a residential street to house asylum seekers. The building is being redeveloped to house unaccompanied asylum-seeking children arriving in Kent. And there are reports that many locals are furious for not being consulted before works on the site started. Now, according to residents, the site has been under construction now for many months. And joining us now to discuss this is our reporter, Charlie Peters. Charlie, welcome to the show. Um, Groundhog Day once again. We saw it in Millham in Cumbria a couple of weeks ago. Before that, in Farnborough, luxury flat there, repurpose locals the last to find out, RAF Scampton, Linton, on it's the same old pattern, Charlie. The poor locals are the last to find out. That's right, and the development on this site, we're told, started in October of last year. And the realisation that this building in Dartford in Kent was being used to house asylum seekers was only realised several months later. And today, GB News can reveal that as part of this process, a 1964 covenant between the NHS and the council in Kent is being broken in order to develop this site. That covenant, as we said, signed in 1964, stresses that the site, this Limes building in Dartford, can only be used as an old people's home for that purpose. Now, Kent are saying that the covenant will be repurposed before the building works are complete, and they say that the building will be used to house unaccompanied asylum-seeking children. The Home Office have processed some 7,000 unaccompanied children who have crossed the channel, either by small boat or, of course, by lorries, since uh, July 2021 until December of last year. It is an unprecedented demand as the country deals with some 118,000 small boats crossings uh, since 2018, when the trend really started. But so much of the fury that we're hearing out of Kent today is that the locals just weren't consulted. There was no meeting, no information, no reports until locals started to express concern. That street where this building is found in Dartford now has several posters and placards protesting the decision to generate this space. The council say that it will be manned 24-7 by security. Every single person who goes there will have an assigned social worker and that anyone is, who is found to be over 18, not an unaccompanied asylum-seeking child, will be referred back to the Home Office. Well, the locals, they're not... Uh, approving of that statement. They don't agree with the process that's gone forward, especially as the council says that they have nine other sites identified in Kent for the same purpose. Well, they won't say where those places are, citing security and safeguarding concerns. So, could another site be coming to a street near you? OK, well, we probably know the answer to that. Charlie Peters, thank you very much for that superb report. Now, I've got a bunch of your emails here. Um, I've been asking you, of course, about Lee Anderson's dramatic defection to the Reform Party, and I've had hundreds of replies already. Here's just a taster of a few of them. Rosemary says this, I admire Richard Tice as an excellent leader and speaker, and I was thinking of joining the Reform Party, but now Lee Anderson joining the Reform Party has tipped the balance. I am joining them immediately. 
Kevin, however, disagrees. He says this, I think Lee Anderson has made a foolish mistake. He seems unprincipled and will not probably be elected again anyway. To propagate division and negativity will not help his case. Kathy says this, Lee Anderson speaks for a huge number of British people. This is our new Brexit. Let's get reform into government. And Bertie disagrees. It's all about balance on this channel. Without branches of members, reform is not going anywhere. If an if enough MPs defect a reform, then maybe they can change all of that. Now, you're watching or listening to GB News coming up. All the latest news, analysis and reaction to that big news of the day. Lee Anderson, of course, defecting to Reform UK. And Whittacombe will give us her thoughts next. And you won't want to miss that. But first, let's get an update on the weather with Alex Burkle. A brighter outlook with Box Solar, sponsors of weather on GB News. Hello again. Here's your latest GB News weather update brought to you by the Met Office. Some places towards the east may see a touch of frost, even a few patches of fog tonight. But for many, it is going to turn wet and windy due to an area of low pressure and an associated weather system feeding in from the west. We already have an occluded front across parts of Northern Ireland that has brought some rain earlier today, and that is going to bring more rain to northwest Scotland as we go through this evening and overnight. But it's across Northern Ireland where we're going to see some heavier rain and strong winds pushing in overnight and that rain then later reaching parts of western England, Wales and Scotland as we go through the early hours of tomorrow. Further east and there may be some clear spells in the cloud and so we could see a touch of frost, perhaps even a few patches of fog around first thing. Otherwise as we go through Tuesday a wet start and a windy start across western parts. The heaviest rain will be over higher ground, particularly over the hills and mountains of North Wales. The rain does ease a little bit as it pushes its way eastwards but most places will see some wet and windy weather for a time. We're going to see some milder air pushing its way in, so temperatures lifting a little bit higher than today, highs of around 13 or 14 Celsius. More wet weather to come as we go through the end of the day tomorrow. Whilst the outbreaks of rain do push their way towards the east, there are further outbreaks of rain pushing in from the west, again heaviest over any higher ground. More rain to come as we go through the rest of the week, particularly across northern and western parts, but it is going to turn milder, temperatures widely getting into mid-teens. Bye-bye. That warm feeling inside from Boxed Boilers, sponsors of weather on GB News. Want to be a winner? You've won £18,000. I'm slipping it. I don't know what to say. Enter our massive spring giveaway with three big seasonal prizes to be won. There's £12,345 in tax-free cash to give your finances a spring boost. We'll also send you on a shopping spree with £500 worth of vouchers to spend in the store of your choice. You'll also get a garden gadget package. For another chance to win the vouchers, the treats and £12,345 in tax-free cash, Text GBWIN to 84902. Text cost £2 plus one standard network rate message. Or post your name and number to GB03 PO Box 8690 Derby DE1 9 T. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5pm on Friday the 29th of March. Full terms and privacy notice at gbnews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if watching or listening on demand. Good luck. GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other. Which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the people's channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Big news, big debates, big opinion. Patrick Christie's Tonight is the week's biggest show. Every weekday, 9 to 11 p.m., we've got the inside track on the day's top stories. There'll be sharp takes you won't get anywhere else. We will set the news agenda, not just follow it, and I want to bring you along for the ride. Whatever it is, we'll have our finger on the pulse. It's news, but it's this close to entertainment. Patrick Christie's Tonight, 9 to 11 p.m., only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel.
I'm Christopher Hope. And I'm Gloria DiPiero, bringing you PMQ's Live here on GB News. Every Wednesday, we'll bring you live coverage of Prime Minister's Questions when Rishi Sunak and Sir Keir Starmer go head-to-head -head in the House of Commons. We'll be asking our viewers and listeners to submit the questions that they would like to put to the Prime Minister, and we'll put that to our panel of top politicians in our Westminster studio. That's PMQ's Live here on GB News, Britain's election channel. 2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise? And who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel. Good afternoon, happy Monday, it's 4pm and welcome to the Martin Daubney Show on GB News, broadcasting live from the heart of Westminster all across the UK. Today, our top story, Lee Anderson, former Deputy Chair of the Tory party and MP for Ashfield, the heart of the Red Wall, defects to Richard Tice's Reform UK party. How significant could this be? We'll have all the latest on this throughout the show. Next, extremism in Britain. 58 terror attack survivors have signed an open letter calling for an end to anti-Muslim hate. And the signatories have hit out at certain politicians who they say put extremism and, the, and Islam in the same bracket. And Princess Kate has issued an official apology over the manipulated photograph of her and her children released on Mother's Day, saying that she was simply experimenting with editing. Should she release the original? That's all coming up in your next hour. Welcome to the show. Well, it's already been a seismic day in British politics with that dramatic defection of Lee Anderson to the Reform Party, 10.30 this morning. I've been asking you for your opinions so far in the day. Got to say, hundreds and hundreds of emails have come flying in. Lee Anderson in fine form, attacking journalists, saying it as he sees it. I want my country back was the opening line of his speech there at that press conference. Are you convinced? Will this make you cross to reform? Or is Lee betraying himself, betraying his party and making a huge mistake? Could he split the vote and let Sir Keir Starmer in? Or is that too little, too late? Is reform the answer? Get in touch all the usual ways. Email gbviews at gbnews.com. I'll read out all the best so long as you keep them clean. But first, it's time for your latest news headlines with Tatiana Sanchez. Martin, thank you and good afternoon. The top stories from the GB newsroom. Lee Anderson says he would still have defected to the Reform UK party even if he hadn't been suspended from the Conservatives. He became the party's first MP this morning after he lost the Tory whip for claiming that Islamists had got hold of the Mayor of London. Polls suggest that around 13% of voters support reform. And as recently as January, Mr Anderson said it was not a proper political party. He now says reform will allow him to speak out on behalf of millions. Shadow Paymaster General Jonathan Ashworth told GB News that it's a blow to Rishi Sunak's government. What I think this reveals is the sheer chaos in the Conservative Party, a government divided from top to bottom and Rishi Sunak too weak to exert any authority and a divided government cannot govern in the interests of the country. I think people have had enough of this and after 14 years of failure, this proves once again that it is time for change. Well, shortly after Mr Anderson's defection to reform was announced today, GB News asked people in his constituency of Ashfield how they feel about his decision to join the party. He's probably doing it to save his own bacon, to be honest, because the people around here would probably vote for reform. So that's probably all he is doing it. It speaks truth, and that's uh, a lot of people don't like that. So. Well, I think it's very nice, and uh, I don't have any... Um issues about him at all? Well, I mean, it's not my prerogative what Lee Anderson does, but I think that it would suit his 
views more than the Conservative Party, and he's tried the Labour Party already. So, yeah, I think um, I think it's for him. Maybe not for Ashfield, but yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think that's his lane. To other news, the Princess of Wales has apologised for an altered family photo released by Kensington Palace. Posting to social media, she admitted that, like many amateur photographers, she occasionally experiments with editing, adding she was sorry for any confusion it caused. The Mother's Day image taken by the Prince of Wales was withdrawn by various global photo agencies after suspicions that a number of edits may have been made. Nottinghamshire Police has been told by a watchdog that it must urgently produce an improvement plan after it was put into special measures. The families of Barnaby Weber and Grace O'Malley Coomer welcomed the news. The two teenagers and school caretaker Ian Coates died during a spate of knife attacks in Nottingham. The force has been asked to improve how it manages and carries out effective investigations and to put measures in place to ensure victims get the support they need. The energy regulator Ofgem is looking at ways to protect consumers from spiralling costs amid a record number of unpaid bills. Around £3.1 billion pounds of debts are piling up as concerns grow over the high cost of household bills. It's after the price of, an energy, of energy in an average British home hit more than £3,500 a year last October. Passengers on board a flight from Australia to New Zealand endured a terrifying mid-air moment when the plane unexpectedly dropped. 50 people were injured, with witnesses describing chaos inside the cabin, saying some were thrown to the ceiling with enough force to break roof panels. 12 passengers were taken to hospital when the flight landed in Auckland, with one in a serious condition. The Boeing 787's sudden loss in altitude is still being investigated. LATAM Airlines says a technical event caused the sudden movement during the flight. And the Queen has joined the Prince of Wales at Westminster Abbey for today's Commonwealth Day service. They're among the senior royals who are gathering for this year's event, which draws on the theme of resilience against a backdrop of health worries in the family. Though he'll miss today's service, the King reaffirmed his commitment to the 56 member countries in a video message. As I've said before, the Commonwealth is like the wiring of a house and its people, our energy and our ideas are the current that runs through those wires. Together and individually, we are strengthened by sharing perspectives and experiences. My belief in our shared endeavours and in the potential of our people remains as sure and strong as it has ever been. For the latest stories, you can sign up to GB News Alerts by scanning the QR code on your screen or you can go to gbnews.com slash alerts. Now back to Martin. Thank you, Tatiana. Now let's get stuck in and let's get back to the news that has surely shaken Westminster to its absolute core. And that is, of course, Red Bull MP, the Rottweiler, Lee Anderson, has joined Richard Tyser's Reform Party, announcing the move at a press conference earlier today, 10.30 this morning. Anderson, who was recently suspended, of course, by the Conservative Party um, for his criticised remarks about London Mayor Sadiq Khan made on this very show two weeks ago Friday, he accused the Tories of stifling free speech and said he found it unpalatable that he'd been disciplined for speaking his mind and he also went on to claim other Tory MPs share his views but would not stick their heads above the parapet, at least not now. Well, joining me in the studio to discuss this is GB News's political editor, Chris Hope. Chris, you were at that press conference and I thought the first line of Lee's I want my country back was a roar that seemed to land. We've had hundreds of emails in today, Chris, and it seems to have landed very, very well with the Red Wallers. That's right. And hi, hi Martin. That's right. I was in the front row. And I, well, yeah, quite. I think he, him saying, you know, this is not the country I remember and start to enforce the laws, the thing you've been saying mm. for weeks now on your programme. Why can't the police enforce the laws they've got to ensure that these Palestinian marches are, are when, when it's being, you know, straightforward and and, and uh, no, no, no extremist issues, why can't they 
they be policed properly. That's definitely mm. part of the problem. And um, uh, yeah, we interviewed uh, uh, Lee Anderson for GB News shortly after. I said, um, when did uh, the PM really you know, find out about your 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 defection to reform? We said he hasn't he hasn't haven't told him. So mm. presumably the PM found out um, what, what, watching GB News. So yeah, I mean, the question is what comes next? He'll take his seat in the House of Commons tomorrow, 11:30 a.m. Sitting up there with Andrew Bridge and another independent uh, uh, party MPs. But of course, he's Reform UK. Nine more Tory MPs in talks about joining reform as we see it today. It was 40, now it's nine. They're being vetted and looked at by the party. Richard Tice telling us earlier that he thinks if, there's a, if, the, if um, Mr Sunak goes long and has the election in the autumn, there'll be more of these moments through this summer. But earlier, my colleague Olivia Utley did speak to Richard Tice about the prospects of his party maybe overtaking the Tory party this summer in the polls. Let's hear what he had to say. What we're going to do actually is get our message out there. Lee's going to be our champion of the Red Wall. This is going to boost us in the polls rapidly. And here's my prediction. By the summer, we're going to close that gap with the Tories. We're now about 5 or 6% behind on a couple of polls. That could close to uh, almost zero if we keep making the progress we're making. So, so here's the thing moving forward. What is Lee Anderson's role going to be? Clearly intimating there, he won't just be a constituency MP, the MP for Ashfield, as a newly crowned reform candidate. He's going to be out on the road drumming up the red wall as a kind of grassroots um, energiser. That's a pretty canny deployment. He can, because I think uh, Richard Tyers, for all of his strengths as leader of reform, he, he may be la he lacks that connection with people in that red wall. When you've got um, Lee Anderson as someone who's from that red wall, I was one of the first journalists to write, I, I wrote the first profile of him, 2,000 word piece, and I was out to do some actual primary research on his life story. I mean, he has got one to tell for the red wall. He, he sold his car when he need, needed more money. He raised those two boys on his own. Uh, he walked to work. He worked for citizens of vice, he's a former Labour councillor, the first time he, he voted Tory was for himself mm -hmm. in Ashfield. Mm -hmm. That's that's the, the powerful Tory story he's got. He can tell people on the Northern Tory Tory base, I've been on a journey join me on that journey to, uh, to, to do different mm. politics and try and support this, this party's policies. I think it's quite compelling. And it could be for them, although the Tories will say differently. OK, well, stick around, Chris. No doubt you want to fire a question at our next guest, because I'm now joined by former Conservative MP Anne Widdicombe, who is now, of course, a leading luminaire in the Reform Party with Richard Tice. Widders, welcome to the show. Always a pleasure. So, if the Reform Party needed that working-class credibility, that red wall um, kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? The Red Wall uh, kind of dynamo that the party needed to drive it through. Is this the right man? Is this a canny appointment? Yes, it's a very, very canny appointment, and it's terrific that Lee uh, has decided to join us because, as you say, he speaks for the Red Wall. Uh, and that is where uh, Brexit uh, got a huge number of its votes and an awful lot of its support from, as you will know. Uh, and uh, therefore, it's right territory for reform, but we do need the right person. We need the person who speaks the language of the Red Wall, the sort of person that the Red Wall would trust. We've got him in the shape of Lee Anderson. Do you think this will play out internally? Um, he's a big character, he's got a big presence, and he's used to being the head honcho. Would he have to be kind of let to do his own devices, or can you see there being a potential situation where a few people within the party are rubbed the wrong way, And Oh, I don't think so. Um, I mean, I think the one thing about the Reform Party, the refreshing change from the Tory party, uh, that it isn't full of factions and divisions and people fighting for number one and, and all the rest of it. Uh, and I think we're all hoping that Lee will play a huge role, that, that as far as the Red Wall is concerned, that he'll be the face of yeah. reform in the Red Wall. It, none of us will have a problem with that. And it's Chris Hope in the studio here with Martin. I just wondered um, what it was like to, to join a much smaller party like the Reform Party. I know you joined the Brexit Party back in the old days. Of course, you were well known and you built your most, most of your life being a Tory MP and a Tory minister. Uh, how is it to join a much smaller party with less, less of the resource and name recognition factor? The most difficult part of it is um, not... Uh, leaving the party, which by then, of course, has completely let you down or you wouldn't be leaving it. 
but it is thinking of all the people who worked for, for you, for your party workers, for all the local workers, all those years being utterly loyal. And now you're turning around and you're saying to them, terribly sorry, you know, I'm repudiating all of that. Um, that is actually the most difficult thing of all. It's exciting to be joining a, a, a new party or a newish party. It's exciting to be joining a small party, which can only grow, as opposed to being in a big party, which can only shrink. It's, um, it's not difficult, except, as I say, in terms of personal loyalties. And, and one man is not an army. One man cannot win a war on his own. But there is talk of the Reform Nine, at least. Uh, Richard Tice flashing his garter. May more follow. Do you think and that could happen? And we've reached this critical mass where the Red Wall really starts falling into reform. Oh, I think it, it's more than possible, particularly now that we've got Lee Anderson. Uh, we've got somebody who, who speaks directly for them and, and who is trusted by them in the Red Wall. Uh, so, yes, I, I, I think it's very likely. Will we get more defections? We may. We may. Uh, it doesn't follow that we take everybody who wants to defect. You know, we're, we're pretty choosy. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, I would, I would have thought it was very likely. I can't see the Tory party suddenly reviving. I think it's going to go on on its current trajectory. And if it yeah. does, then a lot of people will be saying, well, hang on, can we rescue conservatism by going elsewhere? Yeah. Well, uh, and you mentioned you mentioned there uh, the the direct of travel of the party. Uh, do you, do you, I wonder if you think whether um, you might see the crossover happen this summer when you'll see that the Tory party it goes into third place in the polls and reform is second. It's possible. Um, I don't know whether it's probable, but it's certainly possible. Certainly, what we'll be working towards. Uh, but I think, although quite obviously, and and you know, I see why this is all the emphasis is on uh, the Tory party. Um, we need also to expose the, uh, the inadequacies of Labour. And the person who's best placed to do that is indeed Lee Anderson, um, because he knows that party well. <laughs> Sorry, and his sympathies have lain there in the past. And Anne, um, Lee Anderson, of course, is not, not a man who, who, without controversy. He brings a bit of baggage to the party. He's been called every name under the sun, racist, Islamophobe, gammon, small-minded, little Englander, you name it, he's been called a lot. Is any of that an issue? Or do you think the voters, the electorate, the reform voters just don't care about any of this now and they see through it and see the bigger issues? Oh, I think that's probably an issue for the Hampstead uh, Liberals, but... Um... You know, they're not part of the reform party, so I don't think we'll worry. Uh, I don't think it's an issue for ordinary people. In fact, um, all the feedback I've had, or certainly most of the feedback I've had, has been along the lines of, well, he's only said what people are thinking. Uh, and that's what people want from politicians. They want to feel that you understand how they feel uh, and that you and they share a perspective. And um, that is how a lot of people think, and they look at the understand. OK, thank you for joining us. Anne Whittacombe, Lee Anderson, about as subtle as a brick to the head. Let's see if we can become a brick and a foundation stone for the Reform Party. Well, why don't now we hear from Shadow Pay Master General Jonathan Ashworth, who gives us his thoughts on Lee Anderson's defection to Reform UK a little earlier on today. I think it reveals the utter chaos engulfing the Tory party, how the Tory government is utterly divided from top to bottom, and Rishi Sunak is frankly too weak, weak to exert any authority. And a divided government simply cannot govern in the interest of the country, cannot make the changes that people who are paying more in tax and want to see the NHS fixed want to see. And I think what today will reinforce is that after 14 years of failure now, it's time for change. And we can hear now from the residents of Ashfield who have given their thoughts on Lee Anderson's defection. He's probably doing it to save his own bacon, to be honest, because the people around here would probably vote for reform. So that's probably all he is doing it. But while he looks like he wants to speak truth, I know several people have asked him awkward questions in meetings and then banned from the meetings all of a sudden, so it's pretty much the same as the others. Do you think there should now be a by-election in Ashfield because they didn't vote for him as a reform candidate, they did as a Conservative? Hmm. That's an awkward one, isn't it? Depends which... If I actually give a monkeys... I'd probably say there should be a by-election. Seeing as I don't give a monkeys, I don't care. Well, he's the only MP that speaks his mind that's true. I mean, you can't vote for Conservative anymore. 
and you can't vote for Labour, so it's the right. You'll be voting for Lee Anderson? Oh, definitely. No, it's from books. He's the best MP in, that's in the Parliament at the moment. Well, I mean, it's not my prerogative what Lee Anderson does, but I think that it would suit his views more than the Conservative Party, and he's tried the Labour Party already, so, yeah, I think, um, I think it's for him. Maybe not for Ashfield, but, yeah, I think, it's, uh, I think that's his lane. I don't think I'd vote for him in whatever party he's in. I don't really like his views, um, but... But yeah, I can see why people would now, he's in the Reform Party, yeah. I think it's time for change, yeah, yeah, I do. I do, um, I think that Ashfield's uh, underfunded as it is, and hopefully any, any chance to stop that would be great, yeah. And, and how would that be stopped, with what kind of a party here in Ashfield? Uh, I think a Labour Party would help, um, for the obvious reasons really, yeah. Yeah, working class sort of uh, area, and uh, massively underfunded as we are, so. Well, those are streets I know well. I campaigned there as a candidate against Lee Anderson, of course, in the 2019 election. My mum lives in Ashfield. And one thing, Chris Hope, mm. you, you get um, by talking to people like that, there are many, many people in many seats like Ashfield who think a lot more like Lee Anderson than mm. they do his critics. A point well made by uh, Nigel Farage, who's the honorary president of uh, Reform UK. He made very clear that, in fact, you know, this outside of the bubble, it's a big, sizing moment. He hopes, and we're not going to find out what those people think in, in Ashfield in, in terms of actual, actual by-election, there won't be one called. He's made clear he won't, even though the Anderson did sign up to a motion tabled by Anthony Mangala, Tory MP, saying that if you switch sides in Parliament, there's an automatic by-election. That won't happen. The reasoning given by the party is it's like half a million quid to organise and the election's around the corner. The election could be on May the 2nd, but I don't think so. Mm, OK, superb. Chris Hope, thank you for joining us in the studio. Great stuff. And, of course, we'll have lots more on that story at 5 o'clock. And there's plenty of coverage on our website, gbnews.com, and you've helped to make it the fastest growing national news website in the country. So thank you very much. Now you're watching or listening to GB News. Coming up, Princess Kate has issued an official apology over the manipulated photograph of her and her children released on Mother's Day, saying she was simply experimenting with editing. Well, haven't we all done that? Should she release the original photograph or is it all just a bit of a storm in a teacup? We'll be discussing this next. I'm Martin Daubney on GB News, Britain's News Channel. GB News Breakfast, every day from 6am. Absenteeism and parents whose children miss a week or more of school face increased fines in a government drive to tackle absence. This is another one of those government policies which has done nothing to improve the education of our children. Mm. In fact, since this was originally introduced some 10 years ago, the educational standards for our children, the 11-year-olds who can't read when they go up to primary school, have got worse and worse and worse. So it's not working. So what do they do? They just increase the fine, like that may make it work. Most of the parents who get fined are taking their kids up so they can take them on holiday before the holiday companies push the prices up. Mm. And frankly, as a parent, if I've got a £600 discount on my holiday versus a £60 fine, hmm. I'm going to go for the 60 You'll suffer fine. the fine. Yeah. yeah. Let's not forget the other huge absence that children had uh, recently uh, during COVID. Mm. Schools were closed for months and months on end. Online learning was really not making up for that. Yeah. So how could, you know, it's very difficult for the government to say it was fine for us to take your kids out of school for, for months, but if you take them off for a few days to go to Disneyland, then you are the worst parent ever and you should be... But also, be it's, it's, it's the pandemic that, that caused some of the problems with absenteeism now. Absolutely. Because the mental health issues that some of these children now have. And there are tens of thousands of children, they, they call them ghost children, that have simply disappeared from the school register. So it that would be nice. It's, it's really, really scary situation. Um, I'm not seeing that the government is, you know, taking great measures. Well, to, I think know, one of their plans is to have a national register, hmm. which, 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 would, which would help with that. Which would definitely help. But I think it, it's, it's almost... It's, you can't, well, they can't deal with the real problem, so they're going after it's... actually perfectly you know, decent parents who are just taking the odd day off you know, for, to save money, frankly. 
I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Your weekend starts here with Friday Night Live with me, Mark Dolan, 8 till 9 on GB News. Big stories, big guests and big laughs as we get you ready for a cracking weekend. That's Friday Night Live with Mark Dolan. Fridays 8 till 9 on GB News. Bring your own drinks. The admission's free. From 10am every Saturday, we want to make you think and we want to make you laugh. So we will give you all the top stories. Now we start with a story that has shocked the nation this week. But we're also going to make it light and fun and bring some entertainment in to make your Saturday morning nice and restful. Only on GB News, Britain's news channel. Welcome back. It's 4.25. You're watching or listening to Martin Daubney on GB News. Now, Princess Kate's Photoshop faux pas. The Princess of Wales has apologised for the confusion over a Mother's Day photo released by Kensington Palace yesterday. In a statement released on social media, Kate said, like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. Haven't we all done the same? And after picture agencies pulled the picture over manipulation concerns, people are calling for the unedited photo to be released. But Kensington Palace have insisted that they will not be reissuing the original photograph. Well, joining me now to discuss this is Royal Commentator Jenny Bond. Jenny, welcome to the show. It's always a pleasure. Is this a bit of a storm in a teacup? Do you know what, Jenny? It feels to me almost as if the public are saying that they're almost wheeling around a waxwork dummy of Kate in a Land Rover. This is a huge fraud. She just edited a photograph and got a few things wrong, didn't she? Uh, yeah, you are speaking exactly my thoughts. I do think it's a storm in a teacup. The Princess of Wales has made very few mistakes over recent years. This, I think, is a mistake. We have to say that this was a significant photo, the photo that we were all waiting for to show that she's on the road to recovery. Um, and it's the one that she shouldn't have edited and certainly shouldn't have edited if she's as bad at editing as she clearly is, and I think would admit herself. Um, I think, personally, the picture agencies were a bit hasty in issuing this kill, kill the picture mm. um, mandate last night. It was late last night. They obviously weren't going to get a response from the palace at that stage. Perhaps they'd been asking during the day, I don't know. But... Um, it, it seemed a, a rather over-the-top over, over the top reaction, I think. What, what harm has been done? I mean, none, except, I think, to the princess's pride. I guess, Jenny, um, initially the vacuum, the absence of a photograph, fueled the conspiracy theorists. And then, when the photograph came along with these, you can see these little tweaks, Photoshop changes, call them what you like, people again went into overdrive saying, oh, it's AI, it's not her, and here we are again. And in that sense, Jenny, is, um, is the palace um, responsible, in a sense, for fueling this silly paranoia by putting out an image which really should have been checked a bit more closely before it went out? Yes, it certainly should have been checked by uh, her people. Um, and I think you're right to point to the void that has been left by the palace. Uh, they, they resist so much being bounced into anything. Uh, the princess, as we know, wanted to give her uh, medical details. She wanted those to be kept private, and the palace had no option on that, really. But to be forced into issuing um, a photograph or video of her is something, a road they were never going to go down. Um, and that's why this, this picture was so important. I do think now, though, uh, that that void, which really still exists, is going to have to be filled in some way. I think that they really need to 
possibly put out a little video, which they often do on Instagram for her operation. I think they need to do that again fairly quickly just to show moving images of the princess on the road to recovery. And do you think that will satisfy the critics or what, will they never stop or until she has like a triple sack on a trapeze and, you know, I mean, what do people actually want? <laughs> I don't. Nothing will satisfy what used to be known as the Twitter sphere or TikTok land. Uh, but I think we as journalists need to beware of going down those rabbit holes and, and letting social media frenzy uh, drive the news agenda of serious news programmes, because uh, I'm quite convinced there's nothing malicious here that she wasn't trying to mislead the public any more than the rest of us who put up um, hashtag no filter, as if it's a surprise, a surprise that we didn't fiddle around with our photographs. No, I, I think uh, we need to live in the real world. Yeah, and Jenny, I mean, a lot of people there just see a wonderful picture of a mother with her wonderful kids on Mother's Day. And isn't it a shame that we're spending so much time analysing the macro detail rather than just celebrating what should be a wonderful moment? I know, I bet it did ruin her Mother's Day. But, I mean, you try getting three kids uh, to all pose perfectly <laughs> and smile brightly at the right moment. You know, you ask, uh, are they going to release the original photo? Well, no, they're not. But also, it may not much just be one photo. It could be a composite of several when they were all just caught in the right moment. And uh, Catherine made uh, a botched attempt at making it into one picture. OK, superb stuff. Thanks for your time. Always a pleasure. Royal commentator, the legend, that is Jenny Bond. Thank you very much. I wonder what you think out there. Get in touch. We've had a bunch of emails on this, actually. Let me just read a couple out. As well as Lee Anderson, this photograph has really got you going. Um, Brian says this. It's the sort of thing that lots of people do just to get the right image and the poses, especially with three excited kids to contend with. Lay off the princess. And Ian says this. I wonder how many people... Are on social media, criticising the picture and questioning whether they can trust the palace, use their own unedited photos as their profile picture or instead hide behind edited, cropped or filter photographs, if indeed they use a picture of themselves at all. Please, can we lay off the princess and get a life? Do you know what, Ian? I think you speak for many people when you say that. Why can't we just enjoy... Look at it. It's a wondrous photograph and, OK, it's been badly edited. Don't we all do that from time to time? Now, there's lots more still to come between now and five o'clock. I'll bring you throughout the show, including all the latest reaction to our top story. Of course, that's Lee Anderson spectacularly defecting from the Conservatives. Just who could follow him? Apparently, there are nine others waiting in the wings. The Reform Nine, who could they be? But first, it's time for your latest news headlines with Tatiana Sanchez. Martin, thank you. The top stories from the GB newsroom. Lee Anderson says he would still have defected to the Reform UK party even if he hadn't been suspended from the Conservatives. He became the party's first MP this morning after he lost the Tory whip for claiming that Islamists had got control of the Mayor of London. Polls suggest that around 13% of voters support reform. And as recently as January, Mr Anderson said it was not a proper political party. He now says reform will allow him to speak out on behalf of millions. The families of Barnaby Webber and Grace O'Malley Coomer have welcomed news that Nottinghamshire Police has been put in special measures. The two teenagers and school caretaker Ian Coates died during a spate of knife attacks in Nottingham. The force has been told by a watchdog that it must urgently produce an improvement plan amid concerns over how it carries out investigations. The energy regulator Ofgem is looking at ways to protect consumers from spiralling costs amid a record number of unpaid bills. Around £3.1 billion of debts are piling up as concerns grow over the high cost of household bills. It's after the price of energy in an average British home hit more than £3,500 a year last October. The Queen has joined the Prince of Wales at Westminster Abbey for today's Commonwealth Day service. They're among the senior royals who are gathering for this year's event, which draws on the theme of resilience against a backdrop of health worries in the family. Though he'll miss today's service, the King reaffirmed his commitment to the 56 member countries in a video message. As I've said before, the Commonwealth is like the wiring of a house. And its people, our energy and our ideas are the current that runs through those wires. 
Together and individually, we are strengthened by sharing perspectives and experiences. My belief in our shared endeavors and in the potential of our people remains as sure and strong as it has ever been. For the latest stories, you can sign up to GB News Alerts by scanning the QR code on your screen or you can go to gbnews.com slash alerts. Thank you, Tatiana. You are watching all this thing to GB News. Now, don't forget to get your views in on the big story of the day, and that is, of course, Lee Anderson defecting to Reform UK. GB Views at GBNews.com is the email. I'll get to read some of those out very soon, so please get in touch as soon as possible. I'm Martin Daubney on GB News, Britain's News Channel. Patrick Christie's Tonight. Weekdays from 9 p.m. Well, to cut a very long story uh, short, I was the chaplain in, in a school and a uh, pupil asked me to preach on how come they were told they had to accept uh, the LGBT stuff in a Christian school. I thought that was a fair question. So I said, ultimately, no, you don't have to accept anybody else's ideas. You make up your own minds. Uh, and so on topics like uh, the marriage being between a man and a woman, biological sex being real, gender identity not making perfect sense, therefore can't be entirely true. I said, you know, you may adopt the church's position on that and um, respect the people you disagree with, but you make up your own mind. Um, for which, as you say, I was reported to prevent the anti-terror watchdog, um, secular safeguarding authorities, the teaching regulation agency, disclosure and barring service all of whom eventually cleared me, uh, but I lost my job at the school and that's why there's legal action ongoing. Let it's an incredibly say. powerful sermon, <laughs> to be fair. Well, um, uh, what do you make of Justin Welby and his current role? I've obviously rattled off quite a few things there. I mean, you've had personal experience of feeling quite abandoned. What's your view on his position? Well, I, he's doing a very difficult job, in fairness to him. My personal view is... Perhaps he's not doing the best job of it. Um, I'll, I'll be diplomatic about it. In a sense, I'm on the wrong side of things as far as he's concerned, I guess. Um, not, a, not a word of support, not a whisper from anyone in the Church of England's hierarchy for someone simply saying, you may accept the Church of England's own teaching. And, and I can't quite see how he can square that in his own head, but you know, uh, he would have to answer to that himself, I guess. I, I mean, the irony is that, uh, though this is obviously through no fault of your own, the Church of England has recently baptised people who have gone on to not just be referred to prevent, but actually commit acts of terrorism. Meanwhile, you were referred to prevent for essentially uh, teaching. Join us every night on GB News at 11pm for Headliners, which is three top comedians going through the next day's news stories, which is exactly what you need, because when the establishment has gone crazy, you need some craziness to make sense of it. So join us 11pm every night on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. From 10am every Saturday, we want to make you think and we want to make you laugh. So we will give you all the top stories. Now we start with a story that has shocked the nation this week. But we're also going to make it light and fun and bring some entertainment in to make your Saturday morning nice and restful. Only on GB News, Britain's news channel. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11am on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Welcome back. 4.37 is your time. You're watching or listening to Martin Daubney on GB News. Now, as the dust continues to settle on the magnificently, um, spectacularly disruptive news, the prominent Red Wall MP Lee Anderson has defected to Reform UK. Labour Shadow Minister Jonathan Ashworth has said that the whole Lee Anderson saga exemplifies the chaos at the heart of the Conservative Party and emphasises the need for change. Meanwhile, the Conservatives are continuing to push the line that a vote for reform is a vote for the Labour Party. Well, let's get the thoughts now of former Labour Special Advisor Paul Richards. Paul, welcome to the studio. Hi. Always a pleasure. So, are the Labour Party today saying thank you very much, Lee Anderson? You're going to split the vote in the Red Board and let um, Keir Starmer right through the middle. 
Well, you heard Jonathan Ashworth uh, saying it's uh, it's not a bad day for Labour. It exemplifies this chaos the Labour Party is trying to highlight at the heart of government. But I think it it's more about what it means for the vote. I think it's not about one man. I think uh, three-party Lee will come and go, as these uh, defectors tend to in our first-past-the-post system. But what it says about the vote is that it is now splitting, disaggregating, fracturing. That block of right-wing vote, centre of right and right-wing votes, is now splintering. Um, and I'm afraid in our system, the only party that benefits from that is the Labour Party. So that's why Labour's tails are up today, because it's not just about the chaos, it's all about how that looks in terms of on the ground. You might call it a right-wing vote. A lot of people in places like Ashfield, you know, I campaigned there, I stood there, I stood against Lee. My mum lives there, I know the area very well. Mm. They won't call themselves right-wing, they call themselves working class. Mm. And isn't Lee Anderson an authentic voice of that working class? And many people feel that Sir Keir Starmer's Labour Party isn't that. Well, this is the this is the where the, the the battleground for the election is being fought, isn't it? And if Labour can persuade those people who voted for Boris in 2019 to vote Labour in 2024, then Labour stands a very good chance. And the way, only way you're going to do that is not on identity politics and all this stuff around culture wars, but on the National Health Service, potholes, schools, defence. You know, the traditional working class issues. Bread Immigration. And you issues. missed that one out. Immigration is, well, is, too, is the yeah. number one issue in Ashfield. Absolutely. Well, that too. Uh, but a sense that, you know, there's a Labour government in waiting which is sensible on security, is not going to bankrupt the country, is not going to put you out of a job, you know, and actually show that we can run the place in a half-decent way. That's why John Ashworth there was talking about it being time for a change, and Labour's argument is that they are the change. And in our system, you know, it's a Tory government or it's a Labour government, that's what you, get, that's what you wake up to on the Friday morning. So that's, that's the heart of Labour's argument in the Red Wall. I know that um, they call him 30p, Lee. You just call him in three parties, Lee, in a sort of derogatory manner. But isn't the fact, Paul, that he's basically a working class coal miner who was always originally a Labour Party? In fact, he was a councillor. He campaigned mm. for Gloria de Piero. He was Labour mm. through and through. But he, like many others across the Red Bull, felt the Labour Party left them behind when Brexit certainly came along mm. and the continued kind of erosion of working class values as the Labour Party moved into being a more I don't know, liberal, metropolitan metropolitan, student-based party, and there are a lot of people likely that don't necessarily stand with a party. They stand for a set of values, mm. values that the Labour Party wouldn't stood for and no longer do. Well, first of all, people like Lee, when they defect, always say, it's the party's changed, not me. But it's usually them, isn't it? Let's face it. So that's the first thing. You, these people leave their main party, they disappear without trace, by and large. Um, but the, the bigger point, of course, is those voters who sensed that certainly under Corbyn, the Labour Party had left them behind and had become this other thing. But what Starmer's done, and Angela Rayner, who is you know a working class woman with a, a solid working class background, has made the point that Labour now has changed and now does reflect back those uh, values in those seats that historically, for 100 years, were Labour. So Corbyn threw it away, but Starmer is now getting it back by inches. I don't think it's a done deal, though, you know. I don't think the next election is in the bag, so that's why today is interesting, because mm. it does suggest that the Tory bloc is... is, uh, is you know, collapsing, disaggregating, whatever it might be, and splitting the vote. But it's not over yet, and we may have many months more of this to come. And do you think there will be other people following in, in Lee Anderson's footsteps from the Conservative Party and crossing over to reform? If so, if it begins to gather a critical mass, is that something, a more significant threat in the Red Wall to both the Labour Party and the Tories? Well, it's more of a threat to the Tories, I would say, because it splits the vote. And I don't know how many will, you know. I always think these rumours of uh, mass defections and new parties and all of that, I mean, they never really quite materialise, do they? So let's see. So you're writing this off. You don't think it's anything that Labour Party should be worried about. You don't think that there are a significant body. We saw four million people voted UKIP. OK, it failed to translate into seats. Mm. But there are millions of people out there that still feel the residual um, Brexit sentiment. They're concerned about immigration, mm. concerned about a lot of things that the Labour Party might call politically incorrect but aren't being addressed and therefore it creates a vacuum for people like Lee Anderson to fill. Well, I think, I mean, Labour's working hard to win those votes back and to talk about those bread and butter issues and it is things like the health service and schools for our kids and a decent house to live in and those things that really do matter people to people, I think, more than some of these other issues. And Brexit's been and gone, you know, we have to face the reality we're in now. More people think that, that, that Sir Keir Sol might try and take us closer back to Brussels. Well, I don't think so, but he might take us closer back to a working health service and mending some of the potholes and I think that's what we want from a government in the future. 
you know, just get on with the job. Wouldn't it be great to have a day when we wake up and there's no politics in the news? Just mm. the government's just getting on with it, making our lives slightly better each day. Well, that's what, that's the offer, you know, just a solid administration that doesn't mess it up. But what we talk about, Paul? Well, well I don't talk know. about football. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but on a serious point, um, Lee Anderson has done something, you know, seismic today, potentially, mm. in terms of the, that, that reset of what Conservative values stand for. A lot of people think that he represents what Conservatism is, mm. and the Conservative Party no longer does. That actually, the Tories are quite similar to the Labour Party. Well, it's a big mess for the Tories, isn't it? And I think, I mean, Sunak was put in, don't forget, to be the change and to not be Liz Truss. And to, he's now in a worse position than Truss was. Uh, and, uh, the, you know, he's massively behind in the polls. And he now is, would seem as bottled the prospect of an election in May. It would seem like he's going to go long on that. So they are, you know, they're in a death spiral now, really. And this is just another sign of that. Maybe there'll be one or two more. And that'll be another uh, part of the bigger picture. But it is a, it's a governing party in decline which is why Labour is saying, for heaven's sake, just put us out of our misery, get on with it, have an election and let the people decide rather than another six months of this. Superb. Great stuff. Paul Richards, that's a former Labour special advisor. Thanks very much for joining us You're in the welcome. studio in Westminster. Now, moving on, you could win the spring essentials and our latest great British giveaway. There's a garden gadget package, a shopping spree and £12,345 in cash. One, two, three, four, five, tax-free. Here's all the details. We have a ton of top prizes to be won in our spring giveaway. There's a massive £12,345 in tax-free cash to spend however you like, along with £500 in shopping vouchers for your favourite store, a games console, a pizza oven and a portable Sonos smart speaker. And the best news? You could be our next big winner just like Phil. Whoever wins it next is going to be as happy as I was and they're going to get even more money this time round, so why wouldn't you go in the draw? For your chance to win the vouchers, the treats, and £12,345 in tax-free cash, text GBWIN to 84902. Text cost £2 plus one standard network rate message. Or post your name and number to GB03 PO Box 8690 Derby DE1 9 T. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5pm on Friday the 29th of March. Full terms and privacy notice at gbnews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if watching or listening on demand. Good luck. Hello again, here's your latest GB News weather update brought to you by the Met Office. Some places towards the east may see a touch of frost, even a few patches of fog tonight, but for many it is going to turn wet and windy due to an area of low pressure and an associated weather system feeding in from the west. We already have an occluded front across parts of Northern Ireland that has brought some rain earlier today and that is going to bring more rain to northwest Scotland as we go through this evening and overnight, but it's across Northern Ireland where we're going to see some heavier rain and strong winds pushing in overnight and that rain then later reaching parts of western England, Wales and Scotland as we go through the early hours of tomorrow. Further east and there may be some clear spells in the cloud and so we could see a touch of frost, perhaps even a few patches of fog around first thing. Otherwise as we go through Tuesday a wet start and a windy start across western parts. The heaviest rain will be over higher ground, particularly over the hills and mountains of North Wales. The rain does ease a little bit as it pushes its way eastwards but most places will see some wet and windy weather for a time. We're going to see some milder air pushing its way in, so temperatures lifting a little bit higher than today, highs of around 13 or 14 Celsius. More wet weather to come as we go through the end of the day tomorrow. Whilst the outbreaks of rain do push their way towards the east, there are further outbreaks of rain pushing in from the west, again heaviest over any higher ground. More rain to come as we go through the rest of the week, particularly across northern and western parts, but it is going to turn milder, temperatures widely getting into mid-teens. Bye-bye. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels, we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. 
GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other. Which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the people's channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Tired of the usual focus-tested, pre-prepared Westminster runaround? Well, so am I. So you want higher taxes? Is your department to blame for this? Are you rethinking this policy? Every Sunday at 9.30, I'll be sitting down with those in power to get the truth about the issues affecting you. Let's be honest, we've known about the cost pressures of this project for years, not months. That's the Camilla Tomini Show, a politics show with personality. On GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. First, what was deemed to be a fairly innocuous photograph of the Princess of Wales and her children, which was put out for Mother's Day, but it has erupted into a scandal. Four international picture agencies have killed this image. Yeah. That's really rare. I can't think of a, a time since I've been doing this job for the best part of 15 years where a royal image has been recalled. They knew this image would be so scrutinised because it's the first official one we've seen since her abdominal surgery and all the conspiracy theorists. You know, it's just adding fuel to this fire. We're making sure that the British people are kept safe from uh, the various forms of uh, extremism that we sadly see in our country. Every morning, it's breakfast from 6 a.m. Hope you can join us. Welcome back. 4.50 is your time. You're watching or listening to Martin Daubney on GB News. Now, there's plenty more to bring you throughout the show, including the reaction to the big news of the day. Lee Anderson, of course, joining Reform UK. Let me know your thoughts on that one. Ping it over, please. Now, a total of 58 survivors of terror attacks inspired by Islamist extremism have signed an open letter calling for an end to anti-Muslim hate. They also criticised some politicians for effectively equating being Muslim with being an extremist, which they argue makes the job of Islamist extremists easier and plays into the hands of terrorists. Well, this comes as Michael Gove is set to redefine extremism with this week, with Labour's Rachel Reeves saying he's always right to tackle extremism and hatred wherever it rears its head. Well, joining me now is Mohammed Akunji, parliamentary candidate for Bethnal Green and Stepney. Welcome to the show, Mohammed. Always a pleasure to have you on. So you've read the letter today. There's been a lot of talk about extremism on the streets. We've seen um, protests each week. We've seen a huge boom in anti-Semitism. What do you think of the situation currently in Britain? Yeah, I mean, it's fractious, but I think it's fractious mainly because it's been engineered to be so by our leading political figures. Um, we've heard from Rishi Sunak and as well as from um, elements on the Labour side that they're recategorizing these very peaceful marches as extremism marches, even though the police are confirming they're not. So when you have the rhetoric pushed out to say something's extremist when it isn't, then it just turns into a moral panic. Um, in terms of recategorization, this move towards um, redefining extremism is already done in a, in a context where we have a very troublesome definition of extremism, where the UN themselves have stated that uh, it's counterproductive, that actually the definition of extremism by the prevent strategy is something that has caused extremism. Amnesty International, even last year, said that the whole scheme should be, should be scrapped. What we see from Gove, though, is not only is it not being scrapped, but it's being even wider uh, or widened in order to try and encompass effectively everybody. And what he succeeded to do is quite amazing. I have to say, one has to doff their cap at Michael Gove. He's managed to um, elicit uh, negative reactions from every single part of the spectrum of British society, from, the, from arguably the far right all the way to, to the far left, uh, including criticism from three ex-home secretaries, all of which are, are not known for being soft on anything. Well, Mohammed, you're currently an independent candidate, am I right? But you uh, make no bones about the fact you'd like to throw your hat into the ring with George Galloway, would you, from the from his party? Um, he's been no, criticised I... as being something of an extremist in the past, hasn't he? So I'm certainly I share certain values with what Mr. Galloway has said, but I'm not throwing my hat in the ring with his party. Uh, what I hope to do, and I hope that this is. Uh, a a a, uh, a movement by the electorate that they 
in this election uh, pick independent candidates who share a value uh, platform and put some pressure on Labour and also the Conservative Party for departing away from the wishes of our electors and doing effectively what they want against any sort of political mandate. That's particularly when we've got a Prime Minister who wasn't even elected in complaining, complaining about how the electors has elected an individual in Rochdale. It's all as farcical where we are. Mohammed, what do you say about when Nigel Farage said that we are entering a period of sectarian politics in the UK and that involves voting along religious lines, particularly along Muslim lines? And in fact, where you plan to stand, I believe Bethnal Green has the eighth highest Muslim vote in the UK. Is that the way the politics should be going, by voting along grounds of religion? Well, I don't think anyone's voting along grounds of religion. The call uh, from the the street, the constituency that I represent, and many constituencies up and down the country, is not a religious call. It is one to simply recognize that what Israel is doing in Palestine is unacceptable according to international law, and that under the definition of what genocide is, and our responsibility under the Genocide Convention, that it falls responsible for our politicians to do what they can to stop that happening. Can I ask you about, there was, there was an arrest, in fact, we've got the guy on later in the show, there's an arrest for a guy holding up a sign saying Hamas is terrorist. Would you agree with that sentiment? The sentiment that somebody's arrested for holding up a sign that Hamas is terrorist, that person is simply stating the law. I can't see yes. why he was arrested for that. Yeah, I, don't, I, I agree with that. And isn't that part of the problem? We, we have a situation now where we just have increased division on the streets. No, I think the problem there is, is it depends on the context of where he is. He may well have been arrested in order to try and avoid a, uh, a greater fracas if he has been provocative. Now, I don't think he should have been arrested. I think he should have been encouraged away. And I would hope that he isn't charged because I can't see okay. a criminal offence there. But right. increasingly, okay. this shows the problem. The problem okay, thank you very much. We, we have to leave it there. I'm afraid we're simply out of time. Mohammed Okunji, parliamentary candidate for Bethnal Green and Stepney, thank you very much for coming on the show. I would like to speak to you again in the future. Now, you're watching or listening to GB News. Coming up, all latest analysis and news and emails, a reaction to that spectacular defection. Lee Anderson defects to the Reform Party UK. Is that the right thing for everyone to have done? But first, let's get an update on your weather with Alex Burkill. A brighter outlook with Box Solar and sponsors of weather on GB News. Hello again. Here's your latest GB News weather update brought to you by the Met Office. Some places towards the east may see a touch of frost, even a few patches of fog tonight. But for many, it is going to turn wet and windy due to an area of low pressure and an associated weather system feeding in from the west. We already have an occluded front across parts of Northern Ireland that has brought some rain earlier today, and that is going to bring more rain to northwest Scotland as we go through this evening and overnight. But it's across Northern Ireland where we're going to see some heavier rain and strong winds pushing in overnight and that rain then later reaching parts of western England, Wales and Scotland as we go through the early hours of tomorrow. Further east and there may be some clear spells in the cloud and so we could see a touch of frost, perhaps even a few patches of fog around first thing. Otherwise as we go through Tuesday a wet start and a windy start across western parts. The heaviest rain will be over higher ground particularly over the hills and mountains of North Wales. The rain does ease a little bit as it pushes its way eastwards but most places will see some wet and windy weather for a time. We're going to see some milder air pushing its way in, so temperatures lifting a little bit higher than today, highs of around 13 or 14 Celsius. More wet weather to come as we go through the end of the day tomorrow. Whilst the outbreaks of rain do push their way towards the east, there are further outbreaks of rain pushing in from the west, again heaviest over any higher ground. More rain to come as we go through the rest of the week, particularly across northern and western parts, but it is going to turn milder, temperatures widely getting into mid-teens. Bye-bye. Looks like things are heating up. Boxed Boilers, sponsors of weather on GB News.
We've got cash, treats and a spring shopping spree to be won in a great British giveaway. You could win an amazing £12,345 in tax-free cash. Plus, there's a further £500 of shopping vouchers to spend at your favourite store. We'll also give you a gadget package to use in your garden this spring. That includes a games console, a pizza oven and a portable smart speaker so you can listen to GB News on the go. For another chance to win the vouchers, the treats and £12,345 in tax-free cash, text GB Win to 84902. Text cost £2 plus one standard network rate message or post your name and number to GB03 PO Box 8690 Derby DE19 T. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5pm on Friday the 29th of March. Full terms and privacy notice at gbnews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if watching or listening on demand. Good luck. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. 2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise? And who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel. GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other. Which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the People's Channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels. We're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. A very good afternoon to you and a very happy Monday. It's 5 p.m. Welcome to the Martin Dordney Show on GB News, broadcasting live from the heart of Westminster all across the UK. On today's show, our top story, Lee Anderson, the former deputy chair of the Tory party and MP for Ashfield, the heart of the Red Wall, defects to Richard Tyser's Reform UK party. Who could follow? Just how significant could this be? Could there be Conservative MPs defecting to Reform? There are rumours that there are nine said to be considering the move. The last thing, the record low polling Prime Minister Rishi Sunak surely needs a red wall headache. And Princess Kate has issued an official apology over the manipulated photograph of her and her children released on Mother's Day, saying she was simply experimenting with editing. And haven't we all done that? So should she now release the original or should we just keep our noses out? That's all coming up in your next Action Packed Hour. Good afternoon, you wonderful people. You've been getting in touch in your droves. Hundreds and hundreds of emails. The big topics really got you going. Of course, Lee Anderson crossing over to reform. Is that the right thing for him to have done? There was a rambunctious press conference this morning. Lee said, I want my country back. That was his opening line, his big pitch. Many, many people out there completely agree. He, we're seeing our country change before our eyes. Lee Anderson 
um, verbalising that. Richard Tice saying that's the right thing to do. Will he be missed? Will others follow? Or is he splitting the vote, letting Sakia Starmer run through the middle and straight into Downing Street? Get in touch. All the usual ways. Please email me, gbviews at gbnews.com. But before we get cracking into all of that, it's time for your latest news headlines with Tatiana Sanchez. Martin, thank you. The top stories from the GB newsroom. Lee Anderson says he would still have defected to the Reform UK party even if he hadn't been suspended from the Conservatives. He became the party's first MP this morning after he lost the Tory whip for claiming that Islamists had got control of the Mayor of London. Polls suggest that around 13% of voters support reform. And as recently as January, Mr Anderson said it was not a proper political party. He now says reform will allow him to speak out on behalf of millions. Shadow Paymaster General Jonathan Ashworth says it's a blow to Rishi Sunak's government. What I think this reveals is the sheer chaos in the Conservative Party, a government divided from top to bottom, and Rishi Sunak too weak to exert any authority and a divided government cannot govern in the interests of the country. I think people have had enough of this and after 14 years of failure, this proves once again that it is time for change. Shortly after Mr Anderson's defection to reform was announced today, GB News asked people in his constituency of Ashfield how they feel about his decision to join the party. He's probably doing it to save his own bacon, to be honest because the people around here would probably vote for reform. So that's probably all he is doing it. It speaks truth. And that's it. Uh, a lot of people don't like that, so... Well, I think it's very nice. And uh, I don't have any um, issues about him at all. Well, I mean, it's not my prerogative what Lee Anderson does, but I think that it would suit his views more than the Conservative Party, and he's tried the Labour Party already, so... Yeah, I think, um, I think it's for him. Maybe not for Ashfield, but... Yeah, I think, it's, uh, I think that's his lane. To other news, the Princess of Wales has apologised for an altered family photo released by Kensington Palace. Posting to social media, she admitted, like many amateur photographers, she occasionally experiments with editing, adding she was sorry for any confusion it caused. The Mother's Day image taken by the Prince of Wales was withdrawn by various global photo agencies after suspicions that a number of edits may have been made. An aristocrat accused of neglecting her newborn baby leading to her death told a court today that she'd planned to pay someone to smuggle the child overseas. 36-year-old Constance Martin went on the run with her partner Mark Gordon, who's 49, in an attempt to keep their baby after four other children were taken into care. Ms Martin said she and her partner had planned to smuggle themselves abroad, evading a ban on her leaving the country. Their child, who was named Victoria, died while they were on the run from police camping in wintry conditions on the South Downs near Brighton last year. Both defendants deny the charges against them. The case is continuing. Nottinghamshire Police has been told by a watchdog that it must urgently produce an improvement plan after it was put into special measures. The families of Barnaby Webber and Grace O'Malley Coomer welcomed the news. The two teenagers and school caretaker Ian Coates died during a spate of knife attacks in Nottingham. The force has been asked to improve how it manages and carries out effective investigations and to put measures in place to ensure victims get the support they need. The energy regulator Ofgem is looking at ways to protect consumers from spiralling costs amid a record number of unpaid bills. Around £3.1 billion pounds of debts are piling up as concerns grow over the high cost of household bills. It's after the price of energy in an average British home hit more than £3,500 a year last October. Passengers on board a flight from Australia to New Zealand endured a terrifying mid-air moment when the plane unexpectedly dropped. Fifty people were injured, with witnesses describing chaos inside the cabin, saying some were thrown to the ceiling with enough force to break roof panels. Twelve passengers were taken to hospital when the flight landed in Auckland, with one in a serious condition. The Boeing 787 sudden loss in altitude is still being investigated. LATAM Airlines says a technical event caused the sudden movement during the flight. 
And the Queen has joined the Prince of Wales at Westminster Abbey for today's Commonwealth Day service. They're among the senior royals who are gathering for this year's event, which draws on the theme of resilience against a backdrop of health worries in the family. Though he'll miss the service today, the King reaffirmed his commitment to the 56 member countries in a video message. As I've said before, the Commonwealth is like the wiring of a house and its people, our energy and our ideas are the current that runs through those wires. Together and individually, we are strengthened by sharing perspectives and experiences. My belief in our shared endeavours and in the potential of our people remains as sure and strong as it has ever been. For the latest stories, you can sign up to GB News Alerts by scanning the QR code on your screen or you can go to gbnews.com slash alerts. Now it's back to Martin. Thank you, Tatiana. Now let's get stuck in and get back to the news that has surely shaken Westminster to its call today, which of course is at Red Wall MP Lee Anderson, the Rottweiler, has joined Richard Tyson's Reform Party, announcing the move at a press conference early today at 10.30 this morning. Anderson, who was recently suspended by the Conservative Party, of course, for his criticised remarks about London Mayor Sadiq Khan, made on this very show two weeks ago Friday, when he accused the Tories of stifling free speech and said he found it unpalatable that he had been disciplined for speaking his mind and he also went on to claim other Tory MPs share his views but would not stick their heads above the parapet. Or well, join me now in the studio to discuss this and sink his fangs <laughs> into this red meat is GB News' political editor Chris Hope. Chris, you were at the press conference, you asked the first question. The opening line that Lee Anderson roared, I want my country back. And we've had hundreds of emails mm. today, Chris. The message seems to have landed pretty well. Yeah, hi, Martin. Yeah, I was on the front row looking to get the first question to Lee Anderson. I mean, the, the big question is what, what's changed since early January when you said you weren't going to join reform. Mm. We knew, of course, I revealed on, on your programme a while ago, now, the meeting on the, the M1 services between Richard Tice, Reform UK. The holiday in the romance. Holiday in romance. <laughs> when I, that 20 minute meeting. And that, that key meeting, I think, set, set the hairs running in Westminster. He said it was a George Galloway by-election win, mm. that, that he felt that the, he couldn't take it any further. He's worrying about it. He felt that, you know, given what Galloway had done, I had to take a stand. He fell out with the Tory party over the remarks on your programme here didn't he, when he called uh, a Sadiq Khan uh, and his extremist mates for not stepping in, allowing the Met Police to step in and stop those words being projected onto the, the Tower of Big Ben, mm -hmm. which are offences of Jews and, and Israelis. So, yeah, it's been a long journey. He was, of course, um, you remember, don't you, fought him in, in 2019 Did. general election. He was uh, used to be a, a, a Labour councillor. He voted Tory for the first time for himself mm -hmm. in 20, 2019. So he's been on a journey and it carries on. Who goes with him? I think there were as many as nine Tory MPs right now in talks with Reform UK about joining. It may happen, there may be more going across and they could end up being, end up being um, a party which is uh, the third biggest in Parliament, uh, ahead of the Lib Dems even in, in MPs numbers. But earlier, uh, my colleague Olivia uh, Utley did speak to Richard Tice and he asked, she asked Richard Tice about the prospects of the party and here's what you had to say. What we're going to do actually is get our message out there. Lee's going to be our champion of the Red Wall. This is going to boost us in the polls rapidly. And here's my prediction. By the summer, we're going to close that gap with the Tories. We're now about 5 or 6% behind on a couple of polls. That could close to uh, almost zero if we keep making the progress we're making. See, that is interesting. If he's going to be this de facto red wall campaigner to, to galvanise the red wall and we're thinking about who are the reform nine, without naming names, I've got a list here, which I think is <laughs> going to be pretty accurate. Yeah, I wouldn't show the viewers no, that no, case, no. isn't it? <laughs> but I think the hit list is going to be 2019 yeah. first-timers, Brexiteers, Red Wallers, not much historical bond to the Conservative Party, small margins. It's transactional, Martin. The key yeah. thing is it's transactional. These people weren't expected to win in 2019. They came across because they were seduced by the Boris Johnson mm. bandwagon, the, the idea of getting Brexit done. They, they were, of course, main, mainly Brexiteers, wanted to live on that for the Red Wall. Mainly, I think you'll be finding, if you look at a list of Tory MPs with a majority of fewer than 5,000, they'll be wondering, should I go across? 
what's the attraction? Well, you're going to get maybe Nigel Farage campaigning for you at the next general election. You'll get a lot of focus. Uh, the problem might be you don't know where um, your supporters live for the Reform Party. That's often the part, often the problem with these small parties. Yeah, data. But, where do they live? But um, the current, the incumbent Tory MPs for the seats, they will know where their vote is. So in that sense, they will have that edge. The historical yeah. thing, oh, you don't know where your vote is. This lot will. Mm. And if you're they... going with the grain on the swing. The swing is towards Labour, away from the Tory party. If you can make that worse for the, for the Tory party, why not do it? It's very bad news for the, for the Tory party. He was an independent MP for just two weeks, so he wasn't leaving as a, as a Tory MP and joining a reform, but it's a really, really bad look. A big question will be how many people have signed up to the party today? And also, don't forget, the Brexit party, which the Reform Party became, was largely motivated by those £25 a pop individual donors who felt part of a collective democratic movement. Could Lee Anderson switch yeah. on that funding model? Well, again? we'll see. If I, I can, I've asked the numbers from the Reform Party. If I can get them back in time, I'll pop back in the studio and tell you. But often you do see a big move when these big events happen for, the, for any, any party. You'll see uh, other, other there are other members, and you're looking at your the response here from GB News viewers. They, some of them might be joining too. Uh, what do you think Rishi Sunak's people will be saying today? Is it a head in the hands moment, a sort of face palm moment? The last thing they want is, is more bad news. It's one, one of the resignation, the party statement was saying well, he wouldn't, he wouldn't apologise for what he said. We heard very clearly from James Cleverley, the Home Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor. Unless you say sorry, Lee Anderson, for those remarks about Sadiq Khan, you can't come back. And it was very clear from the, from the platform today he wasn't going to apologise. So I think they're accepting what's happened here. The problem they've got, just finally on this one, is Lee Anderson does, does um, symbolise, I think, for the reform, for the, the Tory party, what they're missing. He, he was red wall made flesh, to quote that line now from the BBC. He was someone who I think was, who was really seen as important um, we, we, uh, and many in the South, many supporters in the South looked at him and thought, these are our new Northern cousins why are they winning Tory votes? Now he's gone away. It's a bit of a bad day for the Tory party. And Richard Tice, very competent leader. Ben Habib, very competent. Anne Widdicombe, very competent. But they do lack that working class connection. Could that piece of the jigsaw be shaped like Lee Anderson? Yeah, I think you can say Richard Tice talks maybe the South more than Lee Anderson talks the North. And the person who talks to both those groups is... Nigel Farage. And mm. so far, he's not sure what his plans are. Mm. Well, let's see. That's another one. I mean, if, they, if, they do, if they do get a bump in the polls with Lee, what would that be with Mr Farage on top? That's one to chew over. Thank you very much, Chris Hope. Always a pleasure. Now, let's move on. Prince William has made his first public appearance since his wife admitted to editing their Mother's Day picture. The Prince of Wales accompanied the Queen at today's Commonwealth service. There he is on your screen, just over the road from us here. And this comes as the Princess of Wales said that, like many amateur photographers, she does occasionally experiment with editing. Now, many are calling for the unedited photo to be released, but Kensington Palace have insisted that they will not be reissuing the original photograph. And many might ask, well, why should they? Well, joining me now is royal biographer and photographer Ian Lloyd. Ian, welcome to the show. So, at first, we had a vacuum that was filled by conspiracy theories about where is Kate. Now, we've got a photograph that's gone out, and the conspiracy theorists are at it again. Ian, was she simply, Good as day. she said, experimenting with editing? And therefore, is this just a storm in a teacup? Well, I tend to think it is really a bit of an overreaction from the, the agencies. I mean, I think. Um, it wasn't just experimenting. I mean, she was doing what we all do is, you know, she's taken a photograph and thought, well, it'd be better if we just got rid of X, Y and Z, you know, just, just tidied up that jumper and bits and pieces. Um, and she probably thought it would be accepted as a nice amateur photograph uh, showing the family together, you know, um, a sort of a, just as a sort of PR gesture, but it's 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 backfired. Terribly. And like you said, there's the conspiracy theorists beforehand who were concerned about Kate's health and so on and rumours going around. And now more conspiracy theorists will say, well, why if if they're doing that to the photographs, perhaps there are other things that we don't know, you know. So it's just yeah. going to drag on. But 
And yet, Ian, the reaction from some quarters almost have been as if, no, I don't know, they, they stuck a waxwork dummy of Kate in the back of a Land Rover and driven around Sandringham. I mean, this is just a photograph that she's modified, and it has to be said, Ian, the overriding reaction we've had from GB News viewers here is that, you know, haven't we all edited pictures, especially if we've had surgery, especially if we're feeling a bit below par? And hasn't this taken the shine off a wonderful Mother's Day moment? Yeah, absolutely. That's that's my feeling. I mean, it's gone on for, um, you know, a century and a half since um, Queen Victoria's time when photography was invented. I mean, she, her photographs were uh, airbrushed to um, an inch of her life. I mean, they, they, they got rid of the bags under her eyes and the lines and everything and then put out these lovely pictures that showed this iconic old lady. And the Queen Mother with Cecil Beaton, he sort of slimmed her down when she was getting a bit matronly, you know, did her a great favour. And um, that relationship's gone on through through history. So, um, I mean, they're only continuing to do that. And, and she's doing what any mother would do if, if she thought a, a child would look a bit better with, um, you know, a bit of tidying up here and there, then that's what you do. But I imagine in future they'll be outsourced, you know, send them off to him. MI6 or something and get somebody to, um, you know, sort them out properly, I suppose. Well, so, Ian, if you can um, get rid of a few years and a few pounds and baggy eyes, mate, I might give you a call after the show. Uh, but on, 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 a, on a serious note, <laughs> on a serious note, should the palace just have been a bit more um, meticulous in how they scrutinise the image before it went out? If there's one error, surely maybe it's that. Yeah, because the, the it's it's a repeat performance because there was a photograph Kate took of the queen, the late queen with her great grandchildren, and somebody said, "Oh, that's been uh, photoshopped because you can see, you know, one child not quite in line with the others or something." Um, and then there was the Christmas card last year, wasn't there, with um, uh, the fact that Louis had apparently lost a finger and one of the children had gained a leg. I don't know how they managed that, but it, it was just sort of um, it was not an ideal picture, and and that was widely commented on in the papers but it was all done good naturedly this has obviously escalated so i think they've got to be very careful in the future so do you think ian this is just um, a minor blip and um the, the palace will soon ride over it oh yeah of course i mean there'll be another story tomorrow i mean prince andrew will fall off his horse or um you know harry and Meghan will do something that announce her, her pre role for next president you know it's, it's gonna that the next story will take over so don't, i wouldn't wouldn't lose any sleep over it it's a fantastic. Thanks for joining us on the show. Megan is all smile. Royal biographer and photographer Ian Lloyd. Excellent stuff. You know, you've got to smile about these things. Everyone gets so uptight. It's, oh, my God, the AI's taken over. You know, these are lizard people. No, it's just a photograph that had a bit of a tickle, and it gives someone something to talk about, and it becomes tittle-tattle. Well, you can get lots more on that story on our website. And thanks to you, GBNews.com is the fastest-growing national news website in the country. It's got breaking news and all of the brilliant analysis you've come to expect from GB News. Now, brace yourselves, because it's time now for the latest great British giveaway and your chance to win 12,345 quid. That's one, two, three, four, five pounds in cash, tax-free, and a whole host of seasonal treats. And here's how you can get your claws on it. We're springing into spring and giving you the chance to win the seasonal essentials. First, there's an incredible £12,345 in tax-free cash to be won, plus a spring shopping spree with £500 in shopping vouchers to spend in the store of your choice. And finally, a garden gadget package to enjoy, including a handheld games console, a portable smart speaker and a pizza oven. For your chance to win the vouchers, the treats and £12,300 £145 in tax-free cash, text GBWIN to 84902. Text cost £2 plus one standard network rate message or post your name and number to GB03 PO Box 8690 Derby DE1 9 T. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5pm on Friday the 29th of March. Full terms and privacy notice at gbnews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if watching or listening on demand. Good luck. OK, a short while ago, Chris Hope um, asked the question. He sent a message to Reform HQ to ask them how many new members they'd attracted today. And, Chris, you've got an update. Yeah, 750 people have joined the party. Now, that's quite a lot for a small party. It just shows the impact, I think, and the, you're seeing in your emails the impact that this uh, tight effect, uh, the, the defection of Lee Anderson has had on the party.
They go 750 people have joined the Reform Party in a single day thanks to that defection earlier on of Lee Anderson. That's an immediate impact. Great stuff. Thank you, Chris. Now, you're watching or listening to GB News. Coming up, could the Tories start defecting to Reform UK? There are rumours of nine said to be considering the move. And we'll discuss all of that next. I'm Martin Dorby on GB News, Britain's News Channel. GB News Breakfast, every day from 6am. Absenteeism and parents whose children miss a week or more of school face increased fines in a government drive to tackle absence. This is another one of those government policies which has done nothing to improve the education of our children. Mm. In fact, since this was originally introduced some 10 years ago, the educational standards for our children, the 11-year-olds who can't read when they go up to primary school, have got worse and worse and worse. So it's not working. So what do they do? They just increase the fine, like that may make it work. Most of the parents who get fined are taking their kids up so they can take them on a holiday before the holiday companies push the prices up. Mm. And frankly, as a parent, if I've got a £600 discount on my holiday versus a £60 fine, hmm. I'm going to go for the 60 You'll suffer fine. the fine. Yeah. yeah. Let's not forget the other huge absence that children had uh, recently uh, during COVID. Mm. Schools were closed for months and months on end. Online learning was really not making up for that. Yeah. So how could, you know, it's very difficult for the government to say it was fine for us to take your kids out of school for, for months. But if you take them off for a few days to go to Disneyland, then you are the worst parent ever and you should be... But also, be it's, it's, it's the pandemic that, that caused some of the problems with absenteeism now. Absolutely. Because the mental health issues that some of these children now have. And there are tens of thousands of children, they, they call them ghost children, that have simply disappeared from the school register. So it that would be nice. It's, it's really, really scary situation. Um, I'm not seeing that the government is, you know, taking great measures well to, I think know, one of their punishing. plans is to have a national register hmm. which which, which, would, which would help with that which would definitely help but I think it, it's it's almost it's you can't well, they can't deal with the real problem so they're going after it's... actually perfectly you know decent parents who are just taking the odd day off you know for to save money frankly I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Your weekend starts here with Friday Night Live with me, Mark Dolan, 8 till 9 on GB News. Big stories, big guests and big laughs as we get you ready for a cracking weekend. That's Friday Night Live with Mark Dolan. Fridays 8 till 9 on GB News. Bring your own drinks. The admission's free. From 10am every Saturday, we want to make you think and we want to make you laugh. So we will give you all the top stories. Now we start with a story that has shocked the nation this week. But we're also going to make it light and fun and bring some entertainment in to make your Saturday morning nice and restful. Only on GB News, Britain's news channel. Welcome back. The time is 5.24. You're watching or listening to Martin Daubney on GB News. Now, as the dust continues to settle on, on the news, the prominent Red Wall MP Lee Anderson has defected to Reform UK. Labour Shadow Minister Jonathan Ashworth has said that the whole Lee Anderson saga exemplifies the chaos at the heart of the Conservative Party and emphasises the need for change. Meanwhile, the Conservatives are continuing to push the line that a vote for reform is a vote for the Labour Party. Well, I can now speak with the Business and Agriculture Spokesman for Reform UK, Rupert Lowe. Rupert, welcome to the show. Always a pleasure. Rupert, a lot of people have been saying for a long time that um, Richard Tice, Ben Habib, yourself, the whole reform mob, very, very competent, very, very adept. But what you were missing was that working class grit is Lee Anderson the missing piece of that jigsaw. Well, we're delighted, Martin, to welcome him, and good to be on your show. Thank you for having me on. Um, we're delighted to, to have him uh, amongst us. To have an MP in Parliament is, is incredibly powerful for us. Uh, as, you, as you know, we've been going up in the polls. Uh, the, the Tories, in football terms, have been scoring own goals left, right and centre. And I think with Lee Anderson, they've scored another huge own goal. Uh, I mean, he expressed an opinion which many of us would agree with, 
uh, and the Tory party suspended him. So uh, at the end of the day, I think he has seen the light. He may well have read our working draft of our manifesto, which I think once most people see that, Martin, I think they'll be voting in increasing numbers for reform. Uh, it's, uh, it's based on common sense, and it is exactly what the Tory party should be doing. But as we know, they've lost their way. They've got a uh, very weak gene pool uh, as a result of David Cameron's selection policies. Uh, and reform is offering uh, the people of Britain uh, an opportunity to change the way in which they're governed, which is now long overdue. So I, I think this will help us in the polls. I think we'll, we'll see another surge in the polls. And I, we're delighted to have him uh, amongst us. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think with regard to your comment on other Tories, there must be other Tories who are thinking the same way. They're seeing the polls, I and mean, we're only 5% behind them in a lot of the polls now. I think they will be thinking the same thing, particularly those in the red wall seats. And I think Lee will help us uh, with the red wall seats, given his previous sort of experience as, as, you know, with different parties and in, 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 in different roles. Yeah, indeed. He has um, had three parties now. In fact, to be uncharitable, Rupert, you might say Lee Anderson's had more parties than Elton John. But certainly... Well, he, stood um, against, he stood against you, Martin, didn't he, in, in uh, 2019? So you probably know him better than me. Yeah, he did, and he completely kicked my butt out of Ashfield. I've still got the scars to prove it. But we just heard, Rupert, 750 people have signed up for the Reform Party today. If it's £25 a pop, that's a thick end of 19 grand. That's a lot of movement in one day. Well, I think, again, not only will uh, MPs be uh, thinking about it, Tory MPs, but also I think um, donors will start to now... Uh, you know, divert funds that otherwise they would be giving to the Tories, because as I say, they've lost their way. They're no longer Tories. Uh, they've become, in 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 uh, George Galloway's sort of terms, uh, two cheeks of the same backside. I, I, it's a it, it you know I don't particularly like George Galloway, but I think it's rather a good analogy. And do you think, uh, of course, the, the age-old criticism will come out, as we saw in that 2019 election, voting for the Reform Party will simply split the vote. It will simply let Sir Keir Starmer waltz through the middle and get the keys to Downing Street. Well, I, I think the answer to that, Martin, is we did stand down in 2019. Nigel, as you know, stood down in all the Tory seats and we gifted uh, a, a 90, an 80-seat majority to Boris Johnson. And... I don't, as I as I, I presented at a lunch last week where Simon Heffer was present and he wrote a wonderful article over the weekend about the Reform Party. And I, I asked these collection of people uh, uh, who I was addressing, what can you remember that the Tory party has done with an 80 seat majority? So as you know, I stood down in Dudley North, I gifted a seat to a man called Mar Marco Longhi. Um, I, I think we've in the past uh, shown, uh, really we put the country before our party, and unfortunately, the Tory party, given an 80-seat majority, Martin, wouldn't you love to get your teeth into Great Britain with an 80-seat majority? I would. I would be handing quangos. You know, we spend $275 billion a year on unaccountable quangos, which basically is, is, is a huge amount of taxpayers' money wasted. Uh, and we see waste everywhere. And I think, you know, we've got to see policies which shrink the state and return power to the people who actually pay the tax, which is the tax-paying, hard-working, decent people of Middle England. Uh, and, and, and when we see a party that does that, this country's got the best people. We need, to, we need to deal with benefits and people not working and people self-certifying with depression and mental health problems and everything else. I think that's a big issue we've got to sort out. But we've got the raw material here. We've got the structure. We've got the best people. We just got the worst leadership. I mean, our our whole structure is wrong now, and I think everybody can see it. When I stood in Kingswood in the by-election there recently, people are disillusioned, it's not just with, with the Tories, they're disillusioned with Westminster, with the civil service, with the way in which we're spending all this money on, on woke diversity and inclusion. Uh, and as, as I've said, you know, I, I, the selection process for Parliament was based on diversity, inclusion and quotas, not on the ability to serve the British people. So let's get some common sense back and let's start to get some proper government. And I, okay. I think the fact that we're going up in, poll, in the polls this fast shows people want it uh, and we can deliver it.
OK, well, it's all to play for. Thank you very much for joining us. That's Rupert Lowe, the Business and Agriculture Spokesman for Reform UK. All the best. Now you're watching or listening to GB News, and don't forget to get your views in on the big story of the day. Of course, we keep talking about Lee Anderson defecting spectacularly this morning to Reform UK. There's still time to send your email across. GBviews at gbnews.com is the address, and I'll get these in a little later on in the programme. But first, it's time for your latest news headlines with Tatiana Sanchez. Martin, thank you. The top stories from the GB newsroom. Lee Anderson says he would still have defected to the Reform UK party even if he hadn't been suspended from the Conservatives. He became the party's first MP this morning after he lost the Tory whip for claiming that Islamists had got control of the Mayor of London. Polls suggest around 13% of voters support reform. As recently as January, Mr Anderson said it was not a proper political party. He now says reform will allow him to speak out on behalf of millions. The families of Barnaby Webber and Grace O'Malley Coomer have welcomed news that Nottinghamshire Police has been put in special measures. The two teenagers and school caretaker Ian Coates died during a spate of knife attacks in Nottingham. The force has been told by a watchdog that it must urgently produce an improvement plan amid concerns over how it carries out investigations. Donald Trump will not give any money to Ukraine's effort to fight Russia if he wins the election in November. That is according to the Hungarian Prime Minister. Viktor Orban met his longtime ally in Florida on Friday. He said the former president's claim that the war would end within 24 hours if a re-election is true because he said it was clear Ukraine couldn't win without US support. Leaders across the European Union are concerned that a Trump presidency could lead to an escalation in the conflict. And the Queen has joined the Prince of Wales at Westminster Abbey for today's Commonwealth Day service. They're among the senior royals who are gathering for this year's event, which draws on the theme of resilience against a backdrop of health worries in the family. Though he'll miss today's service, the King reaffirmed his commitment to the 56 member countries in a video message. As I've said before, the Commonwealth is like the wiring of a house and its people, our energy and our ideas are the current that runs through those wires. Together and individually, we are strengthened by sharing perspectives and experiences. My belief in our shared endeavours and in the potential of our people remains as sure and strong as it has ever been. For the latest stories, you can sign up to GB News Alerts by scanning the QR code on your screen or you can go to gbnews.com slash alerts. For a valuable legacy your family can own, gold coins will always shine bright. Rosalind Gold proudly sponsors the GB News Financial Report. Here's a quick snapshot of today's markets. The pound will buy you $1.2810 and €1.1721. Euros. The price of gold is £1,704.43 per ounce. And the FTSE 100 is closed at 7,669 points. Rosalind Gold proudly sponsors the GB News Financial Report. Thank you, Tatiana. My favourite time of the show coming up now. Joining me is Michelle Juby, the queen of primetime political debate. Michelle Juby. Still waiting Jube. for my mug. Still waiting for that mug with that little slogan on it, Martin. I've dropped uh, way too many hints now and I'm not too <laughs> subtle. I don't know what you're waiting for. Where is my mug? Never well, going to stop going on about it. You've got a big enough mug in me, but what's on your menu tonight, Jubes? Well, I've got a great show coming up. I've got Quentin Letts joining me and Aaron Bastani. And, of course, we're going to be unpicking all the big news of the day, the uh, Lee Anderson story. Then I've heard you covering that as well. Uh, also, as well, I was watching that. I had two screens, half GB News and half Sky News. And when Sky News introduced that uh, press conference, I couldn't help but notice they were almost sneering at the fact that the um, our flag, the uh, UK's flag there, was all in the background. Where is this snobbery coming from uh, when it comes to 
our great flag. You know, so many people, is it racist nowadays to, to fly that flag? Some people say, yeah, I say absolutely not. So I want to explore all of that. There's um, huge sums of money as well going to uh, protect things like mosques, synagogues. Uh, is that the road that we need to be going down? What has caused all of this? And will we ever actually be able to calm tensions down in this country or not? Uh, the tax cuts that are coming our way as well. Is it right to be funding them from benefit cuts? And of course, this whole ridiculousness, if you ask me, about this photograph. Martin, people are losing their minds, right? If anyone here has ever been on a dating site, you will know just how many um, alterations and edits your every single person on the street does to their picture. You meet people in real life, Marty, like, who's he? Looks nothing like his picture. <laughs> All of a sudden, uh, it's top front page news because shock horror, a mum has decided to edit herself and perhaps her kids to show them in their best light. Are we losing our minds or what? I think we are, but Michelle, I've never been on a dating website in my life. Don't need to. Thank you very much. This sounds like a superb show coming up. Now then, you're watching or listening to GB News, and don't forget to get your views in on the big story of the day. Of course, that's dramatic defection of the Red Bull Rottweiler Lee Anderson to Reform UK. Ping them over, GB Views at GBNews.com. Still time to read them out. I'm Martin Daubney on GB News, British News Channel. I'm Nigel Farage, and this is GB News, Britain's news channel. Farage, Monday to Thursday, from 7pm. Well, we've been a constitutional monarchy since the late 17th century, and of course part of that deal is that the monarch, or indeed the close immediate royal family, should not interfere with politics that in any way could be seen to affect individual Parties. Now, perhaps one of the most classic cases in the 20th century was Edward VIII, who during his brief reign went down to Merthyr Tydfil in South Wales, met thousands of people who'd lost their jobs in the steel industry. In fact, he shook so many hands in the end, he had to change and shake with his left hand. And he said something must be done to get these people jobs. It was taken as a direct assault on the Conservative government of the day. And we could go on to Edward Heath, as many saw it, using the Queen to get us to join the common market and things the Queen said uh, during the referendum on Scottish separation. And we could, of course, could talk about King Charles, who was Prince of Wales, endlessly talked about climate change and net zero. But the intervention overnight from Prince William, I think, is the most direct Political, a political piece of interference that has international and global implications that I almost think we've ever seen. Prince William is saying to Israel, stop what you're doing. Some will see that as being given a free pass to Hamas. Many young people will say, hooray, he's doing the right thing. But whether he's doing the right thing or not, has he gone just too far with this? Should our future king intervene in this way. I don't believe that he should. I think he's making a very big mistake. Join us every night on GB News at 11 p.m. for Headliners, which is three top comedians going through the next day's news stories, which is exactly what you need, because when the establishment has gone crazy, you need some craziness to make sense of it. So join us 11 p.m. every night on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. From 10 a.m. every Saturday, we want to make you think and we want to make you laugh. So we will give you all the top stories. Now we start with a story that has shocked the nation this week. But we're also going to make it light and fun and bring some entertainment in to make your Saturday morning nice and restful. Only on GB News, Britain's news channel. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11 a.m. on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. 
Welcome back. 5.40 on the final furlong. You're watching or listening to Martin Daubney on GB News. Now, Community Secretary Michael Gove is set to unveil a new definition of extremism in the coming days as part of Rishi Sunak's drive to crack down on Islamist extremists and far-right groups. However, three former Conservative Home Secretaries have warned about the possible negative implications that this new definition could have on free speech and have urged both of the main parties not to, to politicise the issue for short-term political gain in the run-up to the next general election. I'm delighted to say I'm now joined in the studio by the Conservative MP for East Worthing and Shoreham, Tim Lawson. Tim, thanks for... Tom, I get a name wrong every time. <laughs> no, still Tim. Yes. It says Tom there. I mean, look, we're, we're fiddling with definitions here. One thing that struck me about Rishi Sunak's address mm. and that emergency address on the on the steps of Downing Street was an obsession with the far right. Who are the far right? I think people want to know what these groups are. Let's continue to use as a kind of foil, as a bogeyman to allow almost criticisms of Islamism. But who are the far right? Well, there are extremists on both ends of the political um, spectrum. There are the regular suspects, uh, the English Defence League and others on the... Uh, they the disbanded the years ago. Uh, Tommy Robinson and his cronies are still around, making themselves known. They've been part of protests recently as uh, as, as well. Where they go, I'm afraid, trouble seems to uh, to follow. But th this isn't about the, uh, the just the far right or the far left or extremism of various uh, faith groups or whatever. It, it, it's about extremism... Um, generally, it so happens that when we were asking the uh, the Met Commission on the Home Affairs uh, Select Committee recently, there's actually been a much bigger increase in hate crimes attributed to the far right than there has to uh, to the to, to the far left. Uh, uh, frankly, I'm not concerned about numbers. It's a problem, and we need to moderate things. We things have got far too heated. These demonstrations have got far too emotional, far too heated, and in some cases, uh, violent. And the Prime Minister needs to everybody to calm that down, and mm. I completely agree with him. Can I um, ask you about some money has been given out today? £170 million, the Muslim Protection Fund announced today to protect mosques, Muslim faith schools and other community centres, and a corresponding, a much smaller amount, has to be said, £70 million to the Jewish Community Protective Security Grant, despite a 1,350% boom in anti-Semitism. Huge amounts of money being spent. Isn't this proof that, you know, this idea that diversity makes us stronger is, isn't working? If we have to well, spend so much money to correct diversity. It's a sad state of affairs where we have to spend additional resources on protecting certain sectors of society. We've seen a big rise in anti-Semitic uh, um, attacks. We've seen uh, attacks on Jewish organisations, um, mosques, Jewish schools. We have also seen a rise in Islamophobic um, uh, attacks and attacks on mosques and, uh, uh, and schools with a high degree of, of Muslim pupils uh, in them. Actually, we're not comparing figures. The, the Muslim population in this uh, country is far, far higher than the Jewish population. So disproportionately, we're actually spending more uh, protecting... But there's been a um, disproportionately a much greater increase in anti-Semitic crimes. Th there certainly has since the, the 7th of, uh, of October, and that absolutely is unacceptable um, and that's why we've got additional powers that the uh, that the government have given to the uh, to, to the police that's why a lot more people are being uh, arrested are they that well a lot more people are being arrested there was a, a lot of, more was, need to be arrested there was a man arrested on Saturday for holding Completely up a sign saying, saying uh, uh, Hamas is terrorist a simple statement of fact com com Completely and utterly wrong, and the police uh, minister has has absolutely said what on earth was going on there. That was wrong. He was he was then uh, completely released. You should not be arrested, and this isn't the first time for holding a statement of fact that says Hamas is a terrorist organisation. It's not inciting people to violence. It's just stating what actually government policy is. It's not the first time it's happened, and the police got it wrong uh, yeah. in in that case. Good, because um, um, Niak Gorbani was meant to be on this show today. He's actually still being interviewed by the police. So hopefully we'll get him on tomorrow and give a proper apology. I think he deserves that. Can I quickly ask you about mm. Lee Anderson defecting mm. to the um, Reform UK this morning? Nine others rumoured to be following. Is this a dark day for the Conservative Party? Uh, look, I've been around the block quite a few times. I've been in Parliament 27 uh, years. I've, uh, I've seen... Uh, a few defections come and uh, go, and everybody's ramping it up as, gosh, they mean mass defections, this is the end of the Conservative Party, or same happened with, uh, with Labour. Um, I remember two defections, Douglas Carswell and Mark Reckless, back in 2014 to, uh, to UKIP. 
they weren't MPs for much longer after that. No UKIP uh, uh, additional MPs were elected at general elections. I think it's a shame. I mean, I, I quite like Lee. I'm on the Home Fair Select Committee uh, with him. He's an interesting character. He got this one wrong, and now he's compounded his, uh, his error by joining um, reform. What he thinks he's going to achieve, what he thinks reform is going to achieve for his constituents or for the country at large, I really don't know. It's, it's a shame. He's, he's made a mistake. OK, Tim Norton, thank you very much for joining us in the studio. Now you're watching or listening to GB News. And coming up, has Lee Anderson's defection to reform further guaranteed a Labour victory in the next general election? Or we'll speak with a former Labour spokesman next for his thoughts. I'm Martin Daubney on GB News, Britain's News Channel. Hello again, here's your latest GB News weather update brought to you by the Met Office. Some places towards the east may see a touch of frost, even a few patches of fog tonight, but for many it is going to turn wet and windy due to an area of low pressure and an associated weather system feeding in from the west. We already have an occluded front across parts of Northern Ireland that has brought some rain earlier today and that is going to bring more rain to northwest Scotland as we go through this evening and overnight, but it's across Northern Ireland where we're going to see some heavier rain and strong winds pushing in overnight and that rain then later reaching parts of western England, Wales and Scotland as we go through the early hours of tomorrow. Further east and there may be some clear spells in the cloud and so we could see a touch of frost, perhaps even a few patches of fog around first thing. Otherwise as we go through Tuesday a wet start and a windy start across western parts. The heaviest rain will be over higher ground particularly over the hills and mountains of North Wales. The rain does ease a little bit as it pushes its way eastwards but most places will see some wet and windy weather for a time. We're going to see some milder air pushing its way in, so temperatures lifting a little bit higher than today, highs of around 13 or 14 Celsius. More wet weather to come as we go through the end of the day tomorrow. Whilst the outbreaks of rain do push their way towards the east, there are further outbreaks of rain pushing in from the west, again heaviest over any higher ground. More rain to come as we go through the rest of the week, particularly across northern and western parts, but it is going to turn milder, temperatures widely getting into mid-teens. Bye-bye. Big news, big debates, big opinion. Patrick Christie's Tonight is the week's biggest show. Every weekday, 9 to 11 p.m., we've got the inside track on the day's top stories. There'll be sharp takes you won't get anywhere else. We will set the news agenda, not just follow it, and I want to bring you along for the ride. Whatever it is, we'll have our finger on the pulse. It's news, but it's this close to entertainment. Patrick Christie's Tonight, 9 to 11 p.m., only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. I'm Christopher Hope. And I'm Gloria DiPiero, bringing you... PMQ's Live here on GB News. Every Wednesday, we'll bring you live coverage of Prime Minister's Questions when Rishi Sunak and Sir Keir Starmer go head-to-head -head in the House of Commons. We'll be asking our viewers and listeners to submit the questions that they would like to put to the Prime Minister, and we'll put that to our panel of top politicians in our Westminster studio. That's PMQ's Live here on GB News, Britain's election channel. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels. We're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Welcome back. It's 5.49. You're watching or listening to Martin Daubney on GB News. And let's return once again to the big news of the day, and that's Lee Anderson, of course, joining the Reform Party UK. Good news for Starmer, is it? Surely this will split the right-wing vote. Well, someone who may be happy with that is former Labour spokesman James Matthewson. James, welcome to the show. Always an absolute pleasure. So, here we are. Um, he's defected to the Reform Party. A lot of people have been saying from the outset that will simply split the Conservative vote, split the right-wing vote, and allow Sir Keir Starmer to rattle through the middle and rally his way to 10 Downing Street. What's your thoughts? I won't get too excited just yet, but I think that is probably the inevitable outcome. However, the thing that strikes me at the moment is we're seeing two almost parallel situations here, and some people might not like this uh, comparison. Lee Anderson especially won't like this comparison. But I would say that George Galloway and Lee Anderson 
have a lot in common at the moment. And in fact, they are, you know, kind of two sides of the same coin in a way. They're both from these elements of the main political parties that the main political parties have struggled to control. You know, Galloway is obviously a former Labour MP uh, who stood in numerous times and been in many political parties. Uh, you know, Lee's no different. Lee has been now in, in three political parties. And I think what it tells us is that his ego, more than anything, is his drive and force. And it's the same with Galloway. So they're two sides of the same coin, but I think they could both do damage to their respective political parties that they've originated from um, if those parties don't, you know, pull their act together. But James, um, let's not forget that the first party Lee Editor started out with was the Labour Party, and he's a working class former coal miner. A lot of people share his political views, and of course many feel that the Labour Party abandoned them, particularly during the Brexit years. They found themselves as if by proxy, by default, voting for Boris Johnson. Now again they feel the Conservative Party is pretty much the same. You say two sides of the same coin. A lot of people say the same about the Conservative Party and the Labour Party. Therefore creating this vacuum. Isn't the real issue here is that the working classes were abandoned by the Labour Party and that's created this vacuum? No, I don't think so. I think what happened was Brexit itself was such a unique issue and such an important issue to so many people in northern communities. And people on the left and people in progressive circles took that for granted. You know, um, I took that for granted myself when many of my members of my own family disagree with me on that you know th these are just natural arguments that happened at the time but i think we are in this post-brexit time beyond that now and i think the votes that were lent to the tory party you know they've tried to hold on to them and thought that issues like small boats all these other things the very reason lee anderson was welcomed into the fold by them and they've let they've let him walk all over them the tories you know i mean he's only been a tory you know, a couple of years, and he's he's wandering around. You know, he's he's kind of lord of the manor. They made him the the top dog in the party. The most, you know, the most re re uh, working class Tory MP there's ever been, and all these things that were lauded about him. And what's he done? He's gone. And he's you know he's moved on from them because they you know, and that was with them backing him. Imagine if they hadn't backed him, this would have happened sooner. So I don't think at all that this is about a Labour vacuum. I do think um, Lee will follow the pattern of those other. Um, former deserters, as, uh, as Tim Lawton pointed out. You know, you've got people who do defect and then inevitably lose their seats. So reform will have an MP for a little while. I don't think they'll have many more at the election after that, though. OK, thanks for joining us. Give us your thoughts. It's always a pleasure. Former Labour spokesman James Matthewson, thank you very much. Now, you've been getting in touch throughout the show with your thoughts on Lee Anderson. Let's go through a few of those emails now. Neil says this. I am one of Lee Anderson's Ashfield constituents, and I think Lee joined reform is absolutely brilliant. The Conservatives have lost my vote. They already had. Well, they had for a while now, but my MP has joined reform. I will be voting for Lee Anderson again. Lee has a backbone and speaks the truth. Two qualities sadly missing from British politics at the moment. Kim says this, as a disgusted Tory voter, I was going to vote reform as a protest vote because I felt politically homeless. But now I'm thrilled that Lee has decided to move to reform the best news since Brexit. Simon says this, what a brilliant speech by Lee Anderson. Uh, it's great to hear an MP talk and tell people exactly how it is and what it's like. MPs need to take a leaf out of his book. But Brian says this, Lee Anderson is only in it for himself. He'll join any party that has him. He'll let Sir Keir Starmer into number 10. That will be his legacy. And another one here, Paula. I'm 69. I've only ever voted Tory once in the 1970s during the fireman strike. Under duress, I fully intend to vote reform. It's like a breath of fresh air has ignited an interest in politics in me, which I never thought I had. Well, that's it. We've had hundreds and hundreds of emails today. Thank you very much for all of your input. I'll be back tomorrow, 3 till 6 p.m. But after the break, it's Jubes and Co. 6 till 7. And of course, after that, Nigel Farage, 7 till late. No doubt he will have a few things to say about today's spectacular defection. Will it reset the politics in the red wall or will it be a damn squib? Thanks for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow. A brighter outlook with Bob Solar and sponsors of weather on GB News. 
Hello again. Here's your latest GB News weather update brought to you by the Met Office. Some places towards the east may see a touch of frost, even a few patches of fog tonight, but for many it is going to turn wet and windy due to an area of low pressure and an associated weather system feeding in from the west. We already have an occluded front across parts of Northern Ireland that has brought some rain earlier today, and that is going to bring more rain to northwest Scotland as we go through this evening and overnight. But it's across Northern Ireland where we're going to see some heavier rain and strong winds pushing in overnight and that rain then later reaching parts of western England, Wales and Scotland as we go through the early hours of tomorrow. Further east and there may be some clear spells in the cloud and so we could see a touch of frost, perhaps even a few patches of fog around first thing. Otherwise as we go through Tuesday a wet start and a windy start across western parts. The heaviest rain will be over higher ground, particularly over the hills and mountains.